92.1 and AM 1450 KYNT Yankton. count here one out this one hits straight to third throw over to second Lancers get one trying to turn two and that'll do it for this ball game Lancers win in nine off a double play this one drilled right over the head of the second baseman and that's gonna fall one run scores two runs score two men touch home plate the Lancers take a 5-2 lead The following is a presentation of Yankton High School Baseball on KYNT. The Yankton High School Baseball team would like to thank their team sponsor of Aztec. Aztec is offering a healthy sign-on bonus plus great wages and benefits. Build your career with the group that's built to connect from rock to road. Click careers at AztecIndustries.com. Now it's time for Yankton Baseball on KYNT. Shades to the outside portion of the plate. The 2-2 two, two fastball, outside edge, and he gets him a delayed strike call. That is a punch out to end the top of the first. Matthew Sheldon rips this one out toward right. It'll be another base hit for him. Rugby rounding third. There will be a play at the plate. The slide. He's safe at home. The ball gets away from Bence. And heading over to second is Sheldon. He's safe. Yankton takes an early 1-0 lead here in the top of inning number one. Obliterates one out toward right center. And it is gone. The Yankton and the Bucks walk it off on a home run over the right center wall. The Bucks stops here at Riverside Field. You are listening to Yankton Baseball on KYNT, Yankton's home team. This broadcast is brought to you in part by First Dakota National Bank. High V, the UPS store, Truxedo, First Chiropractic Centers, MT and RC Smith Insurance, FNBO, Vision Care Associates, Yankton Medical Clinic, Yankton Rexall. Now, let's go live to KYNT Sports Director and the voice of Yankton Athletics, Bryce Ladwig. Alongside Braden Butler here at beautiful Riverside Field in Yankton. Another season of Yankton Bucks baseball is upon us. Thank you for joining us. As I said, I am Bryce Ladwig. Braden, I love this time of the year. It will be opening day just last week, and we were supposed to have opening day for the high school season Monday. Uh, but, you know, weather in spring in South Dakota, sometimes it doesn't mix. Sometimes uh, the weather doesn't love baseball as much as we do, and that is unfortunate here in the great state of South Dakota. But we do have baseball tonight. Uh, Yankton taking on Vermillion in the season opener. I'm really excited for it. I'm excited for some good baseball. Hopefully it uh, doesn't get me as stressed out as Cubs baseball has recently, almost blowing, I think, a seven-run lead the other night to the Rockies of all teams. But, hey, <laughs> baseball's fun for that reason. And you can get used to uh, Braden and myself just venting about our professional teams, twins for me, um, all season long. And opinions you did not ask for, but this is where you can find those. <laughs> and so that's going to happen. But in front of us here tonight, Class B Vermilion taking on Class A Yankton, uh, but a very good Vermilion team at that. This is the High V pregame show. High V was a helpful smile in every aisle. Braden and I are sitting in the Fairfield Inn and Suites broadcast booth. Hot breakfast, large family rooms in a great location can be found at Fairfield Inn and Suites. Fairfield Inn and Suites in Yankton at 2607 Broadway Avenue or by calling 605 653 2250. I want to thank a few of our sportscaster partners. Without them, this broadcast would not be possible. That includes First Dakota National Bank. For more than 150 years, they've been providing South Dakota families and businesses just like yours with personalized banking services. And Truxedo, a real truck company. America's Best Realty. Tired of renting or apartment living? Ready to upgrade or own your own home? Call America's Best Realty at 260-1600 and unlock the American dream. And Yankton Medical Clinic. So much care, so close to home. Run you down here. Um, just kind of situation or just kind of the story of the game, Braden? There is none. This is the first game of the year. Uh, so let's figure out where these two teams uh, finished last year. Speaking of that, I don't know where Vermillion finished, but I do know Yankton did finish 
uh, with a 12 and five record. They finished second um, in the seed points um, in the standings. And then once the playoffs uh, occurred, Brain, what happened? Well, they were knocked out in the regional, which they were host of their regional. They were knocked out by the 10th seeded Sioux Falls Jefferson. So a little bit of a Cinderella run for the Cavaliers got them to the state semifinals. Yankton did defeat Rapid City Central in the first game of that regional 10 to zero before falling to Jefferson in that regional final. And Pierre would ultimately win the Class A uh, title uh, right behind Lincoln Keenholz, um, who ended up being the Class A Player of the Year. He's no, he can't hurt us anymore, Braden. He he can hurt me eventually if he keeps <laughs> playing at Ohio State. But uh, we'll, we'll get, that's another bridge. That's another sport that he can hurt me in there. That is your standings at review. Obviously, as the season goes along, we hope to have current standings. But why not look at last year? That's brought to you by Rhonda Westland State Farm Insurance. Let Rhonda review your current home, auto, or life insurance to see if she can help you save some money. That's Rhonda Westland State Farm. All right, so for our pregame coach interview, that is brought to you by 1919 Root Beer, the creamiest full-body draft root beer available. It's on tap at Charlie's Pizza or in large cans at Yankton High V. Coach's Corner Show this last Saturday, I caught up with Coach Drew Lawrence of Yankton Bucks Baseball. I'm just going to replay that for you now, or at least part of it, uh, because it's a season preview, and uh, this is the first game of the year, so why not? We'll jump right into that conversation. Let's start yeah. talking about the team this year, uh, Coach. Uh, first, when was the first practice? Kind of when did you get your hands on the guys? Ooh, when was the first practice? So, like I said, with the spring this year, um, with it being so nice, we were able to go outside earlier than any other year that we've been able to do that. So we started having practices in February, not every day, but we were going two or three times a week just to kind of start the process and get ready, get arms ready. Um, so we've been going for a really long time, actually. Um, like if we had to play a game, today we could play it you know and we could be close to full board and and we would be okay and, and we'd be okay with back-to-back -back games already at this point um the other thing that was very fortunate for us is that we had a whole off season where we had almost all of our kids competing and working um and we had a fall series of off-season workouts too so these guys have been playing pretty much all year round you know while sprinkled in with other sports um so you know the spring weather has been good for us as far as up until this point and, Coach, this next thing isn't uh, just a baseball – it's not an issue, but it's just a baseball thing, but sports across all of uh, Yankton High School. But there was a big senior class um, that all graduated at the same time. And now there's going to be a lot of – I'm not going to say new faces to Yankton baseball, but to the varsity roster especially. Uh, just kind of what's that turnover been like? Yeah, when you when you graduate a group of, you know, 12 seniors, um, and you had said it's for every sport, when you graduate that many seniors, there's always going to be – turnover and and different uh different people coming in um that group that we had last year was super talented um super fun to work with um like we've said before on on other broadcasts but the cool thing with that and graduating um that many people is that new people get new new players get an opportunity to get out there and play so yeah we have a lot of new guys that have played a lot of junior legion games and and jv games that now get the opportunity to play um, I personally find it exciting um, to see these kids because one of the coolest things I think as a coach in any sport is seeing kids and how they compete. You can see how, you know, they practice and, and certain numbers that they can put up um, as far as, you know, exit velocity or how hard they can throw a ball, but that doesn't really show you how they can compete. So that's super exciting for me um, and the rest of the coaching staff. And, and I know that these parents are going to be excited too and ready to see, uh, to see us play. And, Coach, you can go in as much detail or just kind of throughout the season. We'll touch on a lot of the players as well. But a uh, very broad question for our first uh, talk of the year. If you're talking offensively for hitting or just, you know, on the offensive side of that ball, kind of what is the forte of this team? Kind of what are you seeing um, from this team? You know, is it speed? Kind of how is that looking? Yeah, so, that you know, that's a tough question, especially when you have that many players coming in um, to the varsity level that haven't played a lot of varsity time. We will have some returners in that group that will be able to hit the ball well and drive the ball well and have been seasoned in doing that. You know, Lucas Kamshoff coming for his senior year is going to be ready to go, and Matthew Sheldon coming back. I mean, those two were at the top of our batting order last year in a very talented group. So having those guys in there to hit is, is always important. Um, we will be fast, I believe. Um, you know, we tend to, over the years, try and be aggressive and try and steal a lot of bases, and that's not going to change. Um, we got a lot of track guys on our team that are fast from that junior class. 
So we will always do that. We're always going to run. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're going to have to, you know, at times try and manufacture some runs and bunt and play some small ball and hope we get some low-scoring games. But that's the cool thing about spring baseball is we got to figure out what we are, and I don't know if we know that quite yet. Way too early scouting report. How are we looking on the mound? Well, kind of the same thing about um, – you know, the, the we returned four people from our team last year, but yep. two of those were our best pitchers last year. Um, you got Matthew Sheldon, who ended his season last year beating post-22 in Legion. And, and, you know, if you ask me, and I, I'm a little biased, I know, but he was probably the most dominant pitcher in that state Legion tournament. And then you got Mark Cottle, who was able to be our, our guy that we relied on through spring and summer and threw a ton of innings for us. So when you return those guys for pitching – that's always great. Um, Sean Turner's back, and he had a really good spring last year. So, you know, we have a group that is able to go out there and, and compete and win games. And then you have new pitchers that threw a ton for the J- Junior Legion and J- uh, JV teams. Um, you know, with Sean um, is able to do that. Um, um, oh, that's Owen with Sean. He's able to come in and pitch. you got Trey Sager, who's a se- uh, junior. Um, and then Frankie Invelt, he saw a little bit of varsity time for us last year, but he's really worked this off season and is going to be able to. And honestly, of the guys that we have on our varsity roster, about 90% of them are going to throw some innings for us this year. So that's always exciting. Yeah, a lot of arms to uh, rely on. That's always nice. Coach, uh, assistant coaching, who, who's helping you out this year? So with varsity, um, you know, it would be me and, and Coach Nick Davis. Um, junior varsity um, is Brandon Nicolite and um, Mitch Gullickson. And then we have a fifth coach, Peyton Mueller, who's going to kind of help out wherever needed. So he's going to do some varsity games, some JV games. Um, we have some freshman games that we're doing this year that he's going to help out with. But with having five coaches for a spring team, it's so important. It's it's awesome to have that many coaches because then we can have really efficient practices and know that everything's covered and what we need to cover. So those guys have been with me for years now, and, and hopefully that continues. And I like to ask all head coaches at the varsity level this. I know you don't have the numbers in front of you, so don't worry. So a very uh, broad answer is only required. Um, How is the health of Yankton baseball looking as far as numbers going all the way down the levels um, from when you first see these kids? You know, we've uh, we've done a really good job over the years um, of being able to keep having kids come out for baseball. Um, I, the numbers are, are good all across the board. We're able to keep them coming out for baseball, and, and hopefully we can. Um, but, yeah, numbers from top to bottom are good. They've... They've been pretty consistent uh, every year that I've been involved with this program, and hopefully we can continue that. All right. Thank you to Coach Drew Lawrence for joining us for our pregame coach interview. We'll take a break here on the High V pregame show. Come back here to Riverside Fields, Yankton Bucks Baseball, KYNT and KYNT TV. It's the Browning Second Amendment sales tax event at Dakota Archery. Save up to $500 on Browning saves now through April 30th, including the new Primal series of saves, which start at $7.99 after rebate. And to put in your new Browning safe, purchase a new Browning shotgun, handgun, or rifle and save 8% until April 15th. Open every night till 8. Dakota Archery and Outdoor Sports, East Highway 50, Yankton, South Dakota. Before the Lancers play, after the game, or maybe even while watching it here. Enjoy authentic flavor at RB Grill House and Sports Bar. We're American themed and feature handcrafted dishes and daily specials with an amazing selection of beer and spirits. Enjoy burgers, steaks, wings, and ribs, sandwiches, salads, seafood, and plenty of HD TVs. Authentic flavor, family driven, and a memorable atmosphere. Join us at RB Grill House and Sports Bar next to River Rocks Event Center on Broadway and Yankton. Go! Go Lancers! We were founded on innovation and a passion to help our customers. This is Kenny Wicks at Aztec in Yankton. We want our employees to thrive and succeed. Our core values are more than something we list on a wall. The team continues to grow, so consider a career with us. We have openings in a variety of departments, sign-on bonuses, double overtime, immediate benefits like retirement savings, paid holidays, bonus earnings, tuition reimbursement, and more. Build your career with a group that's built to connect from rock to road. Stop by 700 West 21st Street or apply at Aztec Job. 
Olson Pest Technicians is a family-owned business since 1966, and with over 50 years of pest management, they understand your issues, and their well-trained team will help you solve your pest problems. Issues with cockroaches, ants, bed bugs, bats, termites, spiders, rats, mice, or other creepy crawling pests? Give your home a fresh start and use the proven method of fumigation to take care of your pest problem. Olson's Pest Technicians will thoroughly get rid of pests so you can rest easy again. Call Olson Pest today, 800-KILL-BUG. That's 1-800-K-I-L-B-U. GS. New starting wages at Parker of Yankton. Parker of Yankton is excited to announce a new generous wage increase. This wage increase includes all production positions, assemblers, machine ops, setups, and material handlers, plus a second shift differential. Parker provides some of the best benefits in the area. And in case you missed it, new increased wages. Apply today at parker.com. Parker, engineering your success. Buying a home in this market can be frustrating. Having an experienced real estate agent is more important than ever. This is Deb Speck with Vision Real Estate, and I've been helping first-time home buyers, those needing a little more space, folks wanting to downsize, and investors for almost 20 years. For personalized service you can trust, call 605-664-5555, and we'll find your next home. Sports injuries can be the result of competitive activities, but can also happen by just participating in leisure activities too. If you're experiencing pain as the result of your chosen activity, consider chiropractic care. I'm Dr. Mackenzie Erlinson with First Chiropractic Centers. We have experienced chiropractors that work with sports injuries every day. Our treatment options are aimed to minimize pain, reduce recovery time, and reduce risk of future injuries. Visit First Chiropractic Centers. Making life better, one adjustment at a time. Are you tired of squinting at fine print in order to understand your insurance coverage? Say hello to Clarity with Vision Insurance Group. They'll help you see life in the best possible way without hurting your budget. From life, homeowners, auto, and business coverage too, they've got it all. Plus, long-term care plans for residents in South Dakota, Iowa, and Nebraska. Don't squint. Visit visioninsurancegrp.com and get your quote today. Vision Insurance Group. Live in the vision beef, pork, seafood, poultry, and more, all at the meat lot. Have you seen the new UTVs and ATVs on the lot at Lewis and Clark Ford? I'm Brandon Tykro, and I'm excited to announce that Lewis and Clark Ford is now selling Massimo Motorsports products. We have on hand Massimo UTVs and ATVs with very affordable prices and financing available. Massimo comes standard with winches and touchscreens with the ability to add many more accessories. Stop at Lewis and Clark Ford and check them out, and look for boats coming soon. Lewis and Clark Ford, 4th and Capital, Yankton. Earn a dollar off per gallon of gas when you transfer and fill a prescription at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's a $1 fuel saver for each prescription you transfer and fill at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to transfer your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. Or you can transfer online or transfer using the Hy-Vee mobile app. Restrictions apply. What's the best beverage to enjoy while rooting on your team? 1919 Root Beer, of course. 1919 is brewed in small batches with only the finest ingredients, real sugar and real vanilla. The unique recipe and these choice ingredients make 1919 the creamiest full-bodied draft root beer available. Find it in 12 packs and single-serve cans at grocery, convenience stores, and restaurants. 1919 is alcohol-free and contains no caffeine, making it a beverage of choice at any time for anyone in the family. And welcome back to Riverside Field. Bryce Ladwig alongside uh, Braden Butler, the High V pregame uh, show. Vermilion Tanagers taking on the Yankton uh, Bucks in the season opener. Class B versus Class A. Uh, Class A action for Yankton is scheduled to start on Saturday. Uh, taking on Huron in makeup games, a doubleheader, and then a single game versus Brandon Valley on Sunday. Let's jump into your pitching matchup brought to you by Vision Care Associates. As we turn our vision towards that pitching mound, you should be considering turning your eyes to the experts at Vision Care Associates, where the health of your eyes comes first. Located at 2701 Fox Run Parkway in Yankton, that's Vision Care Associates. Braden, who's on the mound here today? 
Well, we'll start with the visiting Vermilion Tanagers, and on the mound for them will be Hayden Christofferson. Last year's high school season, he appeared in 18 games uh, and uh, pitched for 14 total innings over those games. Uh, went one and two overall with his record, allowed four runs and struck out nine batters. Ended the year with a 2.00 ERA, 1.29 WHIP, and a .222 batting average allowed. As he's getting the start today, you expect to see him a lot more uh, this season than you saw him last season for Vermilion. Another guy that. And kind of in the same vein, you're going to see more this season than you saw last year, is going to be Mark Cottle on the mound for Yankton. Had 20 innings pitched last season across nine games. Went 3-1, three, 3-for-3 three 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 on save opportunities as well. Had a 1.36 ERA, 1.07 whip, and a batting average allowed of .167. Also struck out 23 batters, which was third most on the team, second most of those returning behind Sean Turner. All right, now it's time for a key player of the game. Brought to you by Missouri River Associates. Looking for insurance agents that have the knowledge to point in the right direction? Contact Missouri River Associates in Yankton. Well, you can't talk about a key player without talking the biggest returning bat. That's going to be Lucas Camshaw for Yankton this year. Batted 412 last season. A on-base percentage of 563, a 1.328 OPS. He was all over the park last year. 11 extra base hits, two home runs, 20 RBI to lead the team. Had 22 runs scored, also a team high. He is uh, the big bat in this lineup. Had multiple home runs last season. We're hoping to see more this year at Riverside Field. He's going to be your key player today. Vision of the game brought to you by Vision Real Estate, where their focus is always on you. Keys to the game, basically, and that is today I'm just going to be get the jitters out you know use this as a quote-unquote preseason game uh, so to speak as it's not a class a matchup but you want to get out in the field get some reps in hopefully get a nice victory here at tonight riverside field fans of the game brought to you by triple time rudy's whether you're traveling to a home or away game be sure to fuel up at triple time rudy's located at 1606 broadway avenue in yankton I do see the Yankton faithful starting to turn in here to Riverside Field. I expect more and more people to be coming into the gate as the evening progresses. Your umpires of the game brought to you by the South Dakota Office of the Attorney General. They are the law on the field. We have a starting lineups around the corner. It is time for your national anthem. We'll actually go ahead and step aside here at Riverside Field. Earn a dollar off per gallon of gas when you transfer and fill a prescription at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's a $1 fuel saver for each prescription you transfer and fill at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to transfer your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. Or you can transfer online or transfer using the Hy-Vee mobile app. Restrictions apply. What's the best beverage to enjoy while rooting on your team? 1919 Root Beer, of course. 1919 is brewed in small batches with only the finest ingredients, real sugar and real vanilla. The unique recipe and these choice ingredients make 1919 the creamiest full-bodied draft root beer available. Find it in 12 packs and single-serve cans at grocery, convenience stores, and restaurants. 1919 is alcohol-free and contains no caffeine, making it a beverage of choice at any time for anyone in the family. Want to take the hassle out of servicing your heating or cooling system? Then sign up for the Kaiser Signature Membership Program. This is Chris Frick with Kaiser Heating and Cooling. Not only will you get peace of mind knowing your units are being serviced regularly, but being a Kaiser Signature member gives you priority service, a discount on parts and labor, and no overtime rates. Take comfort and let our qualified professional technicians keep you running. Be the wiser and go with Kaiser. Kaiser Heating and Cooling of Yankton. Starting last, brought to you by First Chiropractic Centers, making life better, one adjustment at a time. Brayden, take us through. We'll start with the batting order for the Vermilion Tanagers. Batting leadoff will be Connor Peterson. He'll be followed by Mikey Robe. Tate Haig batting third. Trey Hansen batting cleanup. Carter Hansen behind him in the five hole. Connor Rorig in the sixth spot. Jack Moskowitz in the seventh spot. Carson Preister batting eighth. And rounding out the order of the pitcher, Hayden Christofferson batting ninth. Out in the field for the Bucks today, starting in the outfield. Left field is Frankie Entveld in center. The speedster, Austin Goble, one of the fastest men in the state in uh, the track and field in the 100 meter dash. And out in right, another fast uh, player, another fast athlete, Evan Sirk. Around the horn in the infield, got third base, Easton Nelson. Shortstop, Owen Wishon. Second base, Matthew Sheldon. And at first, Trey Sager. Your battery today includes Mark Cottle on the mound and a new face behind the plate, Caden Hughes, stepping up behind the dish. No longer Jace McCorkle, the Great Wall of Yankton. 
Jason McCorkle has only been playing catcher since I was four. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it seems that way. First pitch brought to you by Lewis and Clark Ford. Lewis and Clark Ford is a proud sponsor of Yankton Athletics. Visit them at Fourth and Capital in Yankton or at LewisandClarkFord.com. As you said, Braden Mark Cottle on the mound and Connor Peterson, right-handed hitter, steps to the plate. Excited to see what the first pitch of the season is from Cottle. And misses on the outside. 1-0 count here to begin the year. Mark Cottle really has come on the last season as a very reliable pitcher for Yankton. They're going to ask a lot of him in the spring season. Second pitch in there on the inside portion of the plate for a strike. It's a 1-1 count. Peterson, the shortstop for Vermillion. Takes the 1-1 in the dirt. 2-1 count. Nice block behind the plate by Hughes. Something you want to see early on here from a catcher that we haven't seen a lot at the varsity level in Hughes. Uh, got to that one quickly, and I didn't let it go past him. The 2-1 from the right-hand Cottle. Misses outside. 3-1 count. He's getting really close to that outside corner. Just missing. Trying to work the black here early on for Cottle. There's a good hitter's count here for Peterson. Let's see if he sees something he likes. 3-1. He's a strike on that outside portion. We have a full count. <laughs> Cottle gets a sign he wants from Hughes. The payoff pitch it is a chopper and was right past third base coach for Vermillion. Foul, to be clear. <laughs> Payoff pitch number two from Cottle. And that's a punch out. First batter of the season. First strikeout of the season for Cottle as Hughes overthrows third base for the round the horn. <laughs> so, But that is a punch out. And we have one away. Goes right into what you said in the pregame, though, Bryce. Working those jitters out. You can, uh, you know. You want that mistake to happen here and now and not down the stretch in the dog days. Next up, Mikey Robe. Center fielder for Vermillion. Another right-handed hitter. Takes a breaking ball strike to begin the at-bat. 0-1. Cottle delivers. Hit high and out of play. And makes an 0-2 count. So, Kurt, Braden, for everyone listening, Kurt Dykstra, our GM, had to make sure we were on the same page about not putting the vehicle in danger this year. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, it is not parked in danger, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the last one to drive it, so. <laughs> no, I had, a, I, I, had a, I had to drive it because I went out to center field to set up the camera. I wasn't walking all that way. <laughs> you forget I went back to the station. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. I forgot about that. Anyway, no one really cares. Oh, two count here from Mark Cottle to Mikey Robe. Breaking ball hit over toward first and off of the glove of uh, Sager. And goes out to right field. Circle will throw it back in. I believe they're going to administer an error. We'll was, see the official here. Was a tough play at first. Wouldn't be surprised they do give a hit as it bounced up and went off the side of the glove of Sager. But once again, that's first game of the season. Some of those mistakes are going to be made. And they are going to rule an error uh, at first base. And so an E3. And that brings up Tate Haig. Haig, the catcher for Vermillion. Takes a strike, 0-1. Oh, Looking at Haig last season, he had 66 total plate appearances across 18 games, hit 321 for average, 17 total hits, 9 RBI, 6 runs scored. Kyle checks the runner. Delivers the 0-1. And a swinging strike high and inside. That is the second strikeout of the game as scoreboard is off. And we weren't we were too busy talking as well, Braden. But that is another punch out for uh, Mark Cottle. Two strikeouts already. Those are the two outs on the board. Brings up Trey Hansen. Hansen, the second baseman for Vermillion. Another right-handed bat. 
Ball misses low and outside. They are making Cottle work in this first inning of play. He's already at 14 pitches. Ball hit up the middle. With it was Sean over to Sheldon. A quick flip over for the force out. And so it is a 6-4 put out. And that will do it here for the top of the first. Yanked bats coming up. We have a nothing-nothing ball game here at Riverside Field. Yanked to Bucks Baseball, KYNT and KYNTV. We'll be back in a minute here on KYNT and KYNTV. Are you or a family member receiving Medicare calls asking if you've received your new Medicare card? This should be a red flag as Medicare is not sending out new cards and Medicare will not contact you to ask you about your card. If you have or someone you know has received this type of call and they gave out their Medicare number, please contact the South Dakota Attorney General's Consumer Protection at 800-300-1986. Is the open road calling your name? Explorers Credit Union is here to put you in the driver's seat of your next adventure with an exclusive auto loan offer. For a limited time, get 1% cash back and reduce your rate by 1% when you purchase or refinance your car with us. Imagine where you could go with extra cash in hand and lower monthly payments. Get pre-approved today and explore the road ahead with confidence. Learn more and apply at explorerscu.com today. All loans are subject to approval. See Credit Union for details. And we'll go back to Riverside Field. Bryce Lauder alongside Braden Butler. We had one runner left on, one hit and one air at the top of the first. Yankton bats now coming to the plate. Pitching is Hayden Christofferson for Vermillion. A right-handed thrower. Braden already went over his uh, stat line from last season. And up first for Yankton will be Austin Goble. He'll be followed by Lucas Kamshoff and Matthew Sheldon, the first three guaranteed batters for Yankton. And here we go. Austin Goble, a left-handed hitter. Goble takes some practice cuts, and Christofferson, the righty, ready to deliver. Strike on the outside, 0-1. Oh, 0-1 misses on the inside, it's a 1-1 one, one count to Goble. Taking a look out in the field here for Vermillion. Connor Rorig's out in left. Center field is Mikey Robe, and right field is Carson Preister. Around the horn, Carter Hansen at third. Connor Peterson at short. Trey Hansen at second. Jack Moskovitz at first. Your battery today, Christopherson on the mound, and behind the plate, Tate Haig. And the 2 1 now from Christopherson. Goble slices it out toward left. He'll be down for a hit in front of Rorick. He's going to dig for two as Rorick struggles to get the ball into the infield, and that'll be a double for Austin. Goble starting things off here for Yankton. And that will bring up the big bat, Lucas Kamshaw, a recent Mountain Marty University commit. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be spending a lot of time at Riverside Field here in the near future. He loves it so much. <laughs> Love it so much, might as well stay here. And he likes getting covered by KY and TV, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are the reason. <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> Got to pat ourselves on he'll the back He'll tell you. He'll tell you. <laughs> and outside first pitch, misses for a ball, 1-0. Went over Cam Schaff's stats in the pregame because he's our key player to watch. We did lead the team in RBI last year with 20. First at-bat of the season, he's got a runner in scoring position. Got to think that's how they want this lineup set up. The speedster out of the one hole in Goble, followed by the power bat of Cam Schaff. And it's a 1-1 one, one count. <laughs> and 
and Goble takes off, and expect to see that for two reasons. One, Goble is just super fast, as you mentioned, but also we even heard it in the pregame. Yankton is very aggressive on the base paths. That is a trademark of Coach Drew Lawrence is how he wants to coach these teams. And spoiler alert, Braden, that's what they're going to do all season long. We're going to see a lot of stolen base attempts from the Yankton Bucks. The last thing head coach Drew Lawrence wants out there on the diamond is the opposing pitcher only thinking about the guy in the batter's box. Pitch misses outside. 2-2 two -two count to the right-handed hitter, Cam Schaff. And Cam Schaff pokes this one out toward right. Working his way under it is Preister. He gloves it. Goble tags up, heads out to third. He's 90 feet away from home. And so moving Goble over was Cam Schaff. And that brings up number 18, Matthew Sheldon, second baseman. What was his stat line last year, Braden? Another good hitter for the Bucks last season. As a sophomore last year as well for Sheldon. Hit 323 for average, 20 total hits, five of them for extra bases, 16 RBI was second most on the team. And chopper foul from Sheldon. Count stands 0-1. Did not have a home run in the high school season last year. I believe he had one or two in the spring season, if not more. So he does carry some pop in that bat. He wanted the weather to warm up. I can't blame him. <laughs> These are not facts, by the way. I'm just spitting <laughs> out things right now. 0-1 now to Sheldon. is a breaking ball, I believe, and hits the outside edge for a strike. 0-2. <laughs> As a broadcaster, I lie a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, uh... Goble leading off of Thur as the 0-2 is delivered and just misses the outside. Sheldon takes. It's a 1-2 count. That's a tough take from Sheldon there, too, and a count where you got to protect down 0-2, especially with that runner on third. Still do have an out to play with, so it's not a doomsday scenario for the Bucks. And a strikeout as Sheldon reaches for one in the dirt. And a swing strikeout now brings up Frankie Infeld. Frankie the monster, as you may know him from the Yankton Bucks football season. A very good pass rusher this past season for the Bucks. Left field here today. Got some good size out in left field, too. He's a rangy left fielder. Breaking ball strike from Christofferson, 0-1. Christofferson's throwing a lot of strikes here early on, especially the last two batters. Getting up, went up to 0-2 count to Sheldon, and now starts 0-1 against Invelt. And this one has popped up in the infield. Working his way under it is Hansen, and gloves it for the third out. And so after one, still at 0-0 zero, zero here, as we have one hit and one runner left on base here in the bottom of the first. That's your scoreboard update. Brought to you by Edward Jones Financial Advisor Colby Cookta. To win in sports, you have to adapt your strategy as the game changes. The same is true of investments. Contact Colby Cookta, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Edward Jones member, SIPC. Back in 30 seconds, Yankton Bucks Baseball, KYNT and KYN-TV. At Triple Time Rudy's, not only do you get top-notch fuel to keep you on the move, but it's a destination for delicious local treats. You'll find quality South Dakota products like Dimmick Cheese and premium meats from the Kaler and Renner Lockers. It's your community's pit stop for more than just fuel. Triple Time Rudy supports schools and events and provides fuel discounts to Yankton's largest employers. For all your daily fill-ups and convenience needs, stop by Triple Time Rudy's at 17th and Broadway. So as I was talking to Coach Drew Lawrence uh, before the pregame began, he made, I think it was serious, but I thought it was kind of a joke, but he was very serious, Braden. He said, yeah, you could expect to see like seven pitchers for Yankton today because this is a quote-unquote kind of preseason game, and he wasn't kidding. We already have Sam Gokey out on the mound for Yankton. Well, when you're trying to figure out who is going to be who, uh, replace Drew Riken as the ace of your rotation, you might as well throw every arm out there and see how they perform. Mark Cottle off the mound after just one inning did well in that one inning of play, bringing on Sam Gokey. Uh, Goki did not pitch at the varsity level last season, so we have no stats on him, but Cottle ends it one inning pitch, two strikeouts, no hits, no runs, no um, nothing else for him either. Uh, there was, the Brunner did reach first base on an error in that first inning of play. 
and I believe our defensive setup, other than pitcher, remains the same. And uh, so there you go. My new score book I'm working with, Braden, you know, trying to use the eraser a lot already. <laughs> <laughs> you are a smart man. You brought a pencil to this. I I learned from last year you never do a baseball score book and pen. Uh, well, maybe someday I'll learn something. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Braden. It's game one. <laughs> we'll we see time. where I am in game two. But, yeah, Sam Goki on the mound. And at the plate for uh, Vermillion is Carter Hansen. And so an 0-1 count now as Goki hits the strike in the first pitch. Second one also for a strike up high. It's 0-2 count. Tough hole for Hansen already. He was a 196 batter last season, 10 hits, one of them for extra bases, 6 RBI, 10 runs scored. Also drew 10 walks, so he's a patient batter in there as he draws his first ball. So a ball 1-2 now. Same Goki, another right-handed thrower. And breaking ball hit, spiked in the dirt in front of home plate. 2-2 two, two count. Brother Joe Goki plays for the Mount Marty Lancers. I believe he had 52 stolen bases in a season here for Yankton. That's a real stat. <laughs> so breaking ball misses in the outside. Now it's a full count. Those numbers stick with you, Braden. They do. I haven't even done that on MLB The Show. <laughs> it's way too early to start talking about the show. <laughs> Payoff pitch. And that one is uh, fouled well outside the stadium, presumably into someone's windshield. Not ours, though. Not ours. Not this year. Where's some wood? Let's knock on it. And uh, talk about seeing all these pitchers. There's another one warming up in the bullpen already for the Bucks. Chopper toward a third. Mostly in toward to Easton Nelson. And struggles to bring it to his glove in the transition. And runner will reach safely. Yeah, he's trying to. It was a tough run up for him. It was a slow dribbler out to the left side of the infield when his, Nelson was trying to transfer it, like he said, from his glove to his hand. Just kind of mishandled it on that little transfer and could not get it over to first base. There's another runner on first, presumably uh, from another error. No, they're going to rule that a single as they're going to say it was just a tough play for Nelson to make. Maybe he would have beat it out to first, too, as showing some wheels to first was Hansen. So Carter Hansen credited with a hit. Connor Rorig now at the plate. Rorig left fielder for Vermillion. And showing button gets by Hughes. As Hansen will take off towards second and almost went to third, but he was scampers back to second base. Looking at Rorig's stats from last season, hit under 169 plate appearances, did score 11 runs because he led the team in walks, drawing 18 total last season, also had nine stolen bases. So he is a patient batter. If he's able to get on base, too, he can uh, cause some problems with those steals. And the 0-1. And strike on the outside. 0-2 count. This is the kind of count Rorick doesn't want to be in. Is one of those guys who's looking to get on base by any means necessary and then make the magic happen from there. Being down 0-2, got to expand your own strike zone and try to protect. The 0-2 count. Rorick takes a strike on the outside. Strike three looking. Sam Goki has his first strike out of the season. One away here in the top of the second. Going to hang up backwards. K as well. Third strike out of the game for Yankton. As you mentioned, the first for Goki here in the second inning of work. Moskowitz comes up to the plate. Jack Moskowitz. And a ball taken, 1-0. Small sample size from him last season. Only two plate appearances total throughout the year. Ended up striking out in both of those, trying to get a hot start here as a varsity member this year. Trying to grow into a more key role. 1-0. Hard cut swinging on the inside. 1-1 one, one count. And the 1-1. One, one. And off-speed uh, pitch well in front of it was Boskowitz. Nice pitch from Sam Goki. It's a 1-2 count. I like to have that little mix-up. He's able to throw the heater, get it by guys, and then pulls the rug out from under there. Goki delivers the 1-2. 
fouled into the net. Count remains. I'm not going to flinch this year. I'm going to remember there's a net in front of me. <laughs> I think that's my goal. You're bringing back all the storylines from last year. <laughs> we got to reintroduce them. It's a new year. Might have new listeners. One, two from Goki. And that's another punch out swinging right through. It was Moskowitz. So back to back K's. Sam Goki dealing. Do you think he could do enough for Drew Lawrence to give him another inning? <laughs> Uh, well, they've stopped warming up the guy in the bullpen, so I'm not sure if maybe that's just because <laughs> Goki's having a good outing and he wants to see more, or he's I ready think, to go I think we're going to see seven pitchers today, I really do. <laughs> that brings up Carson uh, Preister, the right fielder for the Tanagers. Two away here. Top of inning number two, runner on second. Still no score here in this uh, matchup, and well in front of the first off-speed pitch was uh, Preister, 0-1 count. Goki delivers. And make that count 0-2. Pricer takes a strike on the inside. Pricer's another guy with a small sample size from last season. Appeared in three games. Did score three runs by getting on base and one stolen base. Did not record any hits, though, in his time last year. Yo 2 from Goki. Curveball outside. Swinging through is Pricer. That is three strikeouts. In the top of inning number two for Sam Goki. One runner is left on, one hit, no errors, and we're still no runs. We're at 0-0. Zero, zero. Thanks to the UPS store, offering packing and shipping, plus printing services, mailboxes, and direct mail services, helping small businesses reach their goals in Yankton across from Walmart and Elwood Family Dental Care, where they take care of the entire family and are always welcoming new patients. And Kaiser Heating and Cooling. When it comes to heating and cooling, be the wiser and go with Kaiser. That's Kaiser Heating and Cooling of Yankton and Explorers Credit Union. Wherever you want your financial journey to take you, Explorers Credit Union is here to help with the vision of financial empowerment for everyone. Discover the difference at ExplorersCU.com. Back in 30 seconds, Yankton, Bucks Baseball, KYNT, and KYNTV. The mission of State Farm is to help people manage the risks of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and realize their dreams. Hi, I'm Roy Wilcox with State Farm Insurance. We have been helping customers get to a better state for over 100 years. No matter where you are in life, we're here to help you make the right play calls for your insurance coverage. Give me a call or stop by anytime. Call Roy Wilcox State Farm Insurance today, 665-7140. Find more at RoyWilcox.com. Go ahead, Braden. Say it on air. <laughs> that sounds so much worse than it actually could have been. All I said was whoever picked these bumps to come back for deserves a raise. <laughs> It was made me, it everybody. So, made it sound so much worse. <laughs> like, way more ominous. <laughs> say it. Say it on air. All right, after play for Yanked as we begin at the bottom of the inning number two, Frankie the Monster. Or excuse me, Owen Wachan, rather. Excuse me. And last season, Wachan did appear in four games for Yankton. 13 total plate appearances, had a hit and an RBI. Did score a couple runs, drew, drew a walk as well. So 1-0 to a Sean and the chopper. I think he chopped it off his own foot. As he'll be given a second here to recoup in the batter's box. Can't feel good for Owen with Sean. Another, another guy who's got a relative plan at Mount Marty. We talked about Sam Goki on the mound last uh, last half inning. Yeah, with Ethan with Sean, yeah. yeah. No, Ethan with Sean up at Mount Marty as well. Got that pipeline from the Yankton area. Yeah, long history of Yankton to Mount Marty baseball. And now a new uh, history of Yankton football to Mount Marty football as well. Yeah, in the last couple of years, it really is nice having strong athletic programs at the high school level. That one misses outside. And then going to the next level with the, uh, the NAIA for Mount Marty. 2-1 count to with Sean. Christofferson in the windup. Chopper towards short, charging it. Peterson, throw over is in time. A nice scoop over there by Moskowitz. Close play, but a nice defensive effort from the first baseman. Yeah, very, very good play. 
Yeah. Give credit to the shortstop as well. Obviously, the stretch at first is what sealed the deal, but play, making that play at short was Connor Peterson came up on it. With Sean showing some wheels there, that's someone uh, just in that flash right there. You want to see him on base more often if he's got that kind of speed. Easton Nelson at the plate for Yankton. Hard cut in the first pitch, 0-1. Easton Nelson, the third baseman for the Bucks. Second pitch, breaking ball, taken for a strike, 0-2. Still no score here. We're at the bottom of any number two, Riverside Field. Vermilion Tanagers taking on the Yankton uh, Bucks here on KYNT and KYNTV. Thank you for joining us. As the 0-2 misses outside East Nelson, it's a 1-2 count. Only last two hitters for Yankton. There's a new look left side of the infield as well defensively with Easton Nelson stepping in at third and Owen Wachon taking over at shortstop from uh, Drew Riken when he wasn't the ace on the mound. Breaking ball misses inside. It's 2-2 two -two count. Good way to battle back here from Nelson after going down 0-2 early. 2-2 two -two misses outside. It's a full count now to Easton Nelson. Looking for something to drive here. No matter the outcome of this at bat, we will at least see Evan Sirk. Trace Sager is in the hole. Caden Hughes is waiting in the wings as well. Would round out the first nine batters for Yankton. And it's a strikeout. Easton Nelson goes down swinging. Second strikeout of the game for Christofferson. And that brings up Evan Sirk, as you said. Right fielder for the Bucks, left-handed hitter. Two lefties in the lineup at least for Yankton, as we still haven't seen Trey Sager or Caden Hughes. Looking at last season for Sirk, he did have six total plate appearances. During his time out there as he swings through for strike one. Did very well on those plate appearances as well, batted over 300. It's a hard cut. And chopper up the middle, gloved by Peterson. Throw over Moskowitz, able to glove that one as well. So a 6-3 put out ends the bottom of inning number two. No hits, no errors, no one left on. As we have a scoreboard, that's your scoreboard update. There's still no score. Brought to you by Alani New Energy Drinks. Wellness should feel good and taste good, which is why Alani New Energy Drinks should be a part of your daily routine. Increase physical performance and boost focus with just 10 calories. No sugar or gluten. Alani New Energy Drinks are a healthy way to fuel your fun. Back in 30 seconds, Yankton Bucks Baseball, KYNT and KYNTV. The other day a gal came into the UPS store to drop off a package. On her way out, she noticed the print sample wall and asked if we could print invitations. The answer was, yes we can. Hi, this is Doug at the UPS store in Yankton and Vermilion. For over seven years now, the UPS store has been helping hundreds of customers with their printing needs. From basic copies to business cards and invitations to posters, we can print them. Stop out and ask about our current print specials and see how we can help with your printing needs. Another inning, another new pitcher for Yankton. Coach Drew Lawrence was not lined. Braden, that's official as a Beck Riken on the mound. And you gotta think if you're Samuel, if you're Sam Goki, if, if you were gonna prove Drew Lawrence wrong and they weren't gonna throw a new pitcher every inning, that would have been the inning uh, <laughs> to keep going with. The three strikeouts in last inning. Good uh, good showing for Goki here. Five strikeouts already total for the Yankton pitching staff. Two from Mark Cottle, who got the start, and then Goki with three last inning. One hit allowed two between the two of them, that one from Goki. Oh, all right. Beck. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry there. Beck Reichen is the man on the mound now as he's the one that has stepped in. No changes out in the field at least, so there's not too much scrambling between innings trying to uh, update our sheets. And as we did last year, Braden will do the same this year. I uh, will hand over play-by-play. -play. I'll still be on the broadcast, clearly, but I'll hand over play-by-play -play to Braden Butler. Take it away. I'm like the middle inning reliever. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Well, except like, the, except unlike the, the box, we're just going to have two pitchers. <laughs> the middle inning reliever, but the starter comes back to close it. <laughs> it's a whole new rule set. Listen. Rules are meant to be broken. Uh, we got a pitcher duel here in my, uh, for the first at-bat of inning number three. Christofferson at the plate. That's thrown the first two innings on the mound for the Tangers. First pitch from Beck Riken Leaves that one low for ball one. You know, I, I know for a fact teams thought it in basketball this season, seeing Beck Riken come out onto the floor. Now they're thinking it in baseball. There's another one. 
Uh, Beck Riken, the younger brother of Mack and Drew Riken. <laughs> As that one misses for ball two. 2-0 two -oh count here early on. Christofferson has not taken the bat off the shoulder. He's being patient. Every town has that uh, few families that just have a bunch that play all sports. That one's low and away. Ball three. and Something to keep an eye on here. If Coach Lawrence is going to keep changing pitchers every inning, it's not really going to let the Tanagers develop a rhythm or a feel for any certain pitcher, so you're going to see more patient at bats out of the gate as the 3-0 -oh catches the inside part for strike one. See if Riken can work out of this one. That one chopped on down the third base line out of play. It's going to roll into the third base coaching box. Count goes full. See what Christofferson has here at the plate. Riken kicks and deals. Leaves that one just low. Christofferson takes ball four. Good patient showing for him, and he's going to be the first base runner of inning number three with that walk. And with that walk, Tanners have a base runner in just about every way. One hit, one reach on error in the first inning, and now a walk. Just missing a hit by pitch, but I don't know if Vermillion really wants that one to happen. And Connor Peterson struck out looking his first at bat to begin the season. First time we see Riken out of the stretch, and that one is down the pipe for strike one. If that first pitch is any indicator, Riken's quick getting home when he's working out of his stretch. Might be tough to steal on him in the future. That is that one high, though, for ball one. 1-1 one, one count. Still scoreless here. Each team has one hit. Each team has an error as well. Riken checks the runner at first, sneaks a couple more glances, now comes home. Big swing there, can't get a piece of it, makes it a 1-2 count. Peterson in danger of capturing, getting his second strikeout of the game. Riken comes set. 1-2 pitch on its way, leaves that one low and away. Good block from Hughes, gets away from him for a moment, but runner won't advance. It remains a two, and it goes to a 2-2 two -two count now. After Peterson, it's Mikey Robe on, on deck, Tate Haig in the hole. This one, Chopper, back to Riken. He's going to glove it, go to second, finds Matthew Sheldon, throw over to first, low, scoop attempted by Sager at first. Doesn't get there in time, so Peterson will reach first base on the fielder's choice. They get the lead runner at second. Mikey Rowe reached on an error uh, by the uh, first baseman, uh, Sager. That was back in the first. And he was the first base runner of the ball game for either team. See what he can do here. Is that one? We'll hit him. And that is now, I think, officially every way a player can get on base for Vermillion. <laughs> it's the least, like, uh, it's the least uh, likable one for the batter, but still works. Now we got runners on first and second for the Tanagers. Too cold for that, man. <laughs> it's too cold to be taking a pitch. I, I, I know it's had highs in the 50s, I think, today still, maybe even 60s in the Yankton area, but still, I don't know if it's ever actually warm enough to be taking a pitch off the back. I'm not going to lie. Is that first and second now for the Tangers? Riken checks the lead runner at second, now comes home. Is that one high and inside? Just Tate Haig at the plate, struck out in his first at-bat. That was the second out of the first inning. Trey Hansen on deck. Riken checks the runner again. 1-0 pitch, leaves that one high, makes it a 2-0 count. <laughs> Only one down here so far, two runners on, 2-0 count. Riken already at 14 pitches. This next pitch would match him for Cottle's total from the first inning. That one finds his own strike one. Makes it a 2-1 one, one count. Looked like Haig was just willing to take all the way until strike got past him. See if he gets more aggressive here at the dish. 
Reichen comes set. Runner takes an extra step off second base. Now coming home is Reichen. This one ripped down the third base line. That's going to be a foul ball. Bouncing ball just missing the third base bag. Count goes to 2-2 now. Battling back from a 2-0 count is Reichen on the mound. Rope still on first. Peterson on second. No hits so far this inning, but there have been three different runners on base. So that one bounces off the plate for ball three. Count goes full. Should we add a bullpen cam? <laughs> we already have the outfield, the center field pitcher cam, the action camera. Might have to at least get some binoculars to see who's warming up down there. I thought I heard someone warming up, but I can't see. There is somebody warming up right oh, now. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Reichen, full count. Payoff pitch has popped up. That one's going to drift out of play. Identify yourself. <laughs> Identify yourself. <laughs> you just get a bullpen mic so we can uh, put our speaker down there. Hey, who's down there? Who's warming up? <laughs> Check in, please. <laughs> Still no score here, by the way. And then the top of any number three. Payoff pitch, part two. Swung on down the third base line. That one chopped away again. Three foul balls in this at bat for Haig. Two down the left field line, one down the right field line. Just kind of trying to find that sweet spot in the middle. Payoff pitch. On its way again from Riken. That one outside. Or inside, excuse me, out of the zone. Ball four. Haig loads the bases with that walk. Brings up Trey Hansen. Runner on every bag. That also means force at any bag. Could be a double play opportunity. Expect Riken to work the low side of the zone. Induce a ground ball. That one does miss low. Ball one makes it a 1-0 count. Don't tell our fellow broadcaster that I have an iPad next to an open window. Nothing bad has ever happened. Although it's on a stand. So, oh, <laughs> no, nothing bad has ever happened to an iPad near an open window during a KYNT broadcast. Riken, this one's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop with Sean. Flips it over to second. First out, bouncing ball. Sager with the pick, and he Whew. does not get him at first. That was close. I well, That's one of them bang-bang plays. If you can't pay me enough to be an umpire, there's going to be two down in the inning, but a run does score. And the runner will reach first on a fielder's choice as well. Yeah, very close over there at the bag. Nice scoop out, regardless, by Sager. That will bring Peterson around to score, and it brings up Carter Hansen now at the plate. Ball gets past him there, and there's going to be another run scoring for the Tangers. As sliding in is Mikey Robe. Make it a 2-0 ball game off that wild pitch. One zero count with two down. Riken trying to reset. Young player for this Yankton team. He's a sophomore pitcher. That one's in there for a strike for Riken. Just nice to see a call go your way after back-to-back -back runs have scored. Had scored in as many pitches for Vermillion. Riken comes set in a 1-1 count, checking the runner at second. A lot of dancing at second for Vermillion. That one misses low, maybe a little bit outside as well, ball two. Trey Hansen not letting Riken forget about him on the second base bag. Pitch comes home to Carter. Hansen swinging a miss. There's strike two. Count goes to 2-2. Two -two. Riken trying to work out of this jam. Two runs have already come across in the inning for Vermillion. Another runner still in scoring position. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner goes for third. That one's going to bounce off the plate. Ball three. Count goes full, and now the runner's on third with a stolen base for Trey Hansen. Drew Lawrence is going to call time, come talk to his sophomore pitcher. He's going to bring the infield in with him. 
Just trying to settle the nerves. Uh, we saw this a lot last year with young pitchers. Uh, Coach Lawrence, I don't know what words of wisdom he'd use, but a lot of the time he was able to calm his young pitchers, get them to get their mind right, get their focus back on, and get out of the inning. Oh, by the way, our pitching changes today brought to you by Hedro, one of Yankton's biggest and best employers. When you're ready for a break and looking for a new career direction, visit jobs.hedro.com. Also, Brian, I want to thank a few of our sportscaster partners, including a Midwest Insurance Agency. See Travis and Whitney Devine at Midwest Insurance for your farm, home, and auto insurance needs. Call today to set up an appointment. And Avera, moving health forward, one office solution. The one source for all your office products, including copiers, furniture, and office supplies. One Office Solutions look at Nixie Pizza Ranch on Broadway in Yankton. And finally, Aztec. Aztec of Yankton was founded on innovation and a passion to help their customers. Right now, they are offering a healthy sign-on bonus with great wages and benefits. Build your career with a group that's built to connect from rock to road. Click careers at AztecIndustries.com. Aztec, proud to support Yankton Bucks Baseball. See if the pep talk works as Riken's going to go back out of his windup with the runner on third. Payoff pitch. That one in there, strike three. Whatever Coach Lawrence said, it worked wonders. Riken gets out of the inning, but not before some damage is done. Two runs come across for Vermillion. It's a 2-0 ball game as we head to the bottom of the third inning. No hits in that inning. Two runs, one runner left on base. I do want to thank a couple of our Sportscaster Club members for helping make this broadcast possible, starting with Graham Tire. You notice issues with your vehicle, don't hesitate to call the service experts at Graham Tire. They do more than sell tires. Graham Tire of Yankton, your auto service and tire store next door. FNBO, the great big small bank, and for more than 165 years, they've been with you where you are. The UPS store, offering packing and shipping, plus printing services, mailboxes, and direct mail services. They've been helping small businesses reach their goals in Yankton, across from Walmart, and Yankton Thrive. There's a thriving business economy right here in the Yankton area. Your one source and resource for all businesses, from retail to manufacturing, is Yankton Thrive. For more, go to yanktonsd.com. New pitcher on the mound for Vermillion here, and we're going to have him f have his name for you when we return here on KYNT and KYNTV, back with the bottom of the third in 30 seconds. FM 1021 and AM 1450, KYNT, Yankton. Is it the competition that keeps bringing you back? The long-standing rivalries? Or is it seeing friends again and cheering on your favorite team? At First Dakota, we're here for it all. We appreciate the fans, the players, the coaches and officials, the concessions crew. The shared community experience is part of what makes life here great, and we're here for it. See you at the game. First Dakota National Bank, member FDIC. Oh, Sheboygan, I just can't get you off my mind. Get ready to grill. Nothing sizzles with flavor like Sheboygan Bratwurst. Slide into your local grocer for a pack of natural casing wieners. Swing into grilling season with Sheboygan Sausage. Produced with pride right here at Simple Meats in Yankton. It's a home run. I got your boy get on my mind. Your boy get. Connor Rorig on the mound here for the Vermilion Tangers coming in from left field. It's a straight swap for Hayden Christofferson who's out and left now. First two pitches from him have missed the zone. It's a 2 0 count now. Leading off this inning is Trey Sager, his first at bat of the season. Now 3-0 count to Sager. Staying patient his first looks of the year. And that one's going to clip him. Would have been ball four if it didn't, so he's taking first base no matter what. Probably wouldn't have, would have liked to go without the bruise, but his first on base, his first appearance on base of the season. It was a breaking ball. It was a breaking ball. It won't <laughs> bruise that much. <laughs> now that, you know, getting hit by 60 is fine. Don't yeah. worry about it. No, <laughs> 70 you start worrying about. <laughs> Sager on first. Uh, did not record any varsity stats from last season, so it was his first varsity appearance on base. And this was a grounder to the shortstop from Caden Hughes. Trying to turn two is Vermillion. Hughes beats it out, though, at first. They do get the lead runner in Sager to retire the first batter of the inning. A 6-4 put out on the fielder's choice. That brings up the top of the order. Austin Goble doubled to open up this ball game for Yankton, the left-handed batter. Poked it out to left field. See if he can try to do the same here. 
Talked about the wheels he had earlier on. That one high and away, ball one. Rory trying to dial in his control here early on. Goble showed bunt, pulls back, strike anyway. Runner taking off for second. Oh. Caden Hughes overslid the bag, and he's upset with himself. He got in there around the tag, but then the right arm slipped off. Good play, good recovery by Vermillion. That's going to clear the base paths and also be the second out of the inning. Is Austin Goble still at the plate? One-one pitch to Goble, high and away, ball two. He was trying to say, Rorick trying to dial in his uh, control of his eight pitches so far. Only two of them have found the zone for strikes. Make it three. Makes the count 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes, two outs. Yankton trailing by two here in the bottom of inning number three. It's a 2-0 ball game. Goble has the lone hit of the game for Yankton. Trying to get on base again. This is going to be a grounder to second base. Tough to beat out if Goble can get there in time. And the throw is going to beat him there. But the fact that Goble even made yeah. that a close <laughs> play at first shows you the kind of speed he carries. Three up, three down. Unconventional way for Yankton. But it's going to bring us to the top of the fourth with the Yankton Bucks out taking the field again. Scoreboard update in this one, 2-0. Yankton Trails Vermillion is brought to you by Edward Jones Financial Advisor Colby Cookta. To win in sports, you have to adapt your strategy as the game changes. The same is true of investments. Contact Colby Cookta, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Edward Jones, member SIPC. We'll be back here in 30 seconds on KYNT and KYNTV with the top of inning number four. Life doesn't slow down just because you're sick. At Yankton Medical Clinic, you can be seen today. Yankton Medical Clinic provides complete care with their full range of specialists, diagnostic tools, outpatient surgery center, and pharmacy. So you get all the care you need, all under one roof. Get back to the busyness of everyday life, feeling like yourself again. With same-day appointments at Yankton Medical Clinic. So much care, so close to home. Welcome back in here, KYNT, KYN TV. It's a 2-0 ball game as we go to the top of inning number four from Riverside Field. Surprise, surprise, new pitcher on the mound as head coach Drew Lawrence has thrown a new arm out there to start every inning so far for Yankton. This one is Kale Gary. Let's take a look at his stats from last season for Yankton. And those are his stats from last season for Yankton. Did not make any appearances at the varsity level. Another guy trying to come up. We're going to see what they have from him on the mound. Trying to replace some decent arms, or some very good arms. I, I feel like decent is underselling it with Drew Riken, but some very good arms out of their rotation. Trying to find replacements for them this year, and why not game one? See what you got in all the arms in your pen. It's like Gale is, Gary is a right-handed thrower. Everybody in the field looks to be remaining the same. Still Nelson at third, Washon at short, Sheldon at second. And Sager at first. Outfield remains the same as well. Infield in left, Goble in center with Evan Sirk out in right. Behind the plate, still Caden Hughes. Got to find a replacement for the Great Wall. Well, that's a good way to start if you're <laughs> staying out there all the time. Connor Rorick steps up to the plate, struck out looking in his first at bat. See what Gary has for him. His first pitch, finds the zone, strike one. Roy just stepped down to the mound in the last half inning for Vermillion. Got the Bucks to go three up, three down, a little unconventionally. As that one misses low for a ball, gets away from the catcher as well. No runners on, so nobody moves. 1-1 one, one count now for Kale Gary. One one pitch. Inside. Getting out of the way was Connor Rory there. Makes it a two one count. With his day coming to an end, Beck Riken, one inning pitch, allowed two runs, one of them earned, did have a strikeout as well, no hits either, as this one is a soft drive out to the third baseman, Easton Nelson gloves it, and that's going to be the 
First out of the inning. I was seriously going to say that, by the way. I was just going to mention that uh, two runs given up, no hits um, by Beck Reichen in that inning. Just kind of unfortunate circumstances. There are a couple of mistakes, unfortunately, on the defensive side. Uh, hit by pitch, uh, a couple of fielders' choices, and just how a cookie crumbled. Unfortunately, that one misses low and away for Gary for ball one. At the plate is Jack Moskowitz. Big swing there from Moskowitz. Can't get a piece of it, though. Strike one. 1-1 one, one count now. And a bit of a moment there trying to score that last uh, line out to Easton Nelson. I forgot which number third base is in baseball scoring for a second. <laughs> it's one of those things where you're just looking at something, you have to blink twice, and your brain resets. 1-2 count now after that last pitch with a strike from Gary. See who he's got here. You're looking for the strikeout. Leaves that one away. Outside for ball two. Goes to a 2-2 two -two count with one down. 2-0 your score here in the top of inning number four. Yankton trailing Vermillion, the season opener. Gary leaves that one inside. That one had some heat on it, too. I think Moskowitz is going to take his time <laughs> getting down to the first down the first baseline as that's another hit by pitch. Get the nerves out of the way here at the first game of the year. And Moskowitz was doubled over. He's still grabbing at his back. That one did not feel good for him. He's going to stick it out, though. Baseball players are tough. Don't let anybody ever try to convince you different. Up to the plate is Carson Preister. Stuck, struck out in his first at-bat. That one left low for ball one. First pitch to him. Gary checks the runner at first. Now comes set. Deals and deals. That one outside the zone as well. Ball two. It's 2-0 count now. Preister in this. Same story for a lot of these Tanger bats so far. Trying to maintain patience and discipline at the plate. 2-0 pitch. This is inside ball three. Gary steps off, takes a deep breath, now gets back on the rubber. 3-0 pitch. You assume it's going to be in the zone. We'll see if Preister wants to try to get a piece of it. If he's taken all the way, that one finds the zone. No swing from Preister. Makes it a 3-1 count. Three-one pitch sent back up the middle off the glove of Gary Sheldon trying to scoop it had to get out of the base path there as he was almost made contact with the runner from first to second even with everything going against Yankton there they were still able to get the play over at first no actually scratch that safe at first yeah it was close and uh, Drew Lawrence is going to go out and talk to the field official either get an explanation or maybe see if he can get overturned. I'm not quite sure of the procedure on that actually. Hey, by the way, do have the manual printed out this year. <laughs> do have the manual printed out. So, uh, in the past whenever we'd have a question about something usually a uh, man we refer to as the Oracle, James Simbrick, if he would be listening <laughs> from the P&D, would let us know. Always appreciate him. Uh, looks like the umpires are now having a conference as well. I almost wonder if Coach Lawrence is arguing for a potential runner interference as Sheldon was trying to charge that ball. But if there, as long as the runner is in the base path, he has no obligation to stop his momentum to get out of the way. See what the official ruling is here from the umpires, and they agree with the call on the field. It is safe. So runners at first and second now. Can rule that a single for Preister and brings up Hayden Christofferson. First baseman playing shallow there, Sager. Potential bunt. Protecting against a potential bunt, I should say. First pitch strike from Kale Gary makes it an 0-1 count. No balls, one strike, one out, two runners on, and a 2-0 ball game. Yankton trails Vermillion in this opening game of their 2024 campaign. It's going to be a busy opening weekend for them. They get tomorrow off, does Yankton, but then a doubleheader on Saturday and another standalone game on Sunday. This one back up the middle. Gloved by Gary. He's going to flip it over to first. Runners advance, but that's going to be the second out of the inning. 
One three put out as runners advance to second and third. Brings up the top of the order, Connor Peterson. Peterson reached on a fielder's choice, came around to score earlier on in this one. Also struck out looking in the first inning. Gary checking the runners. First pitch in there for strike one. See a couple of hand motions from the dugout for Yankton. They're telling Gary to relax. Just focus on the batter as this one is swung on and hit. Got a little too far under it though. Drifting out towards shallow right field was Matthew Sheldon, but he tripped up as he was making that transition from the turf to the grass. Evan Sirk able to pick up the pieces though and end the inning. No runs come across. No hits either for the Tanagers. Two runners left on base. We go to the bottom of inning number four here on KYNT and KYN TV. Do you want to thank a couple of our Sportscaster Club members for helping make this broadcast possible? Northtown Automotive, your local Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer. Visit NorthtownUSA.com. FloorTech, whether your home or floor is wet, call FloorTech 665 4839. Sherco, proud supporter of Yankton Sports. We need to be sure and make it Sherco and State Farm Roy Wilcox. They've been helping customers get to a better state for over 100 years. No matter where you are in life, they'll help you make the right play calls for your insurance coverage. Roy Wilcox State Farm Insurance is a proud supporter of Yankton Athletics. 2-0, Rorick still on the mound for Vermillion as the Yankton Bats are coming up to the plate. Lucas Kamshoff will lead off on KYNT and KYN-TV when we come back. This is Yankton Bucks Baseball back in 30 seconds. So, you need a new vehicle. What's the best vehicle for you? Where do you get financing? What's your trade worth? Answer all these questions and more at BillionAuto.com. You can compare 16 new car brands and thousands of used vehicles, all in the palm of your hand, at BillionAuto.com. Plus, estimate the trade value of your vehicle in two easy steps. It's car buying made easy. Apply for credit pre-approval at BillionAuto.com. All applications accepted, not all approved. Head to the bottom of inning number four in a 2 nothing ball game. Yankton trails here in their season opener to Vermillion. Kind of bad at the plate right now is exactly he want to see to get a run started. Lucas Kamshoff steps into the batter's box. That one left inside from Rorig. 1-0 goes the count. Only the second half bat of the game for Kamshoff here in inning number four. Flew out in his first at bat. That one misses the zone as well. 2-0 count now to Kamshoff. Matthew Sheldon on deck, Frankie Infelt in the hole. Owen with Sean waiting in the wings. 2-0 pitch to Camp Schaff. He's going to take a swing at this one and put a charge into it out to right field. Drifting back is the right fielder. He is going to glove it with the left hand and be the first out of the inning here, Lucas Camp Schaff. Put it right into that one, but not enough of one as Carson Preister was able to get under it. Brings up Matthew Sheldon. Sheldon struck out in his first at bat and was for the second baseman. So he's got here against Rorig. First pitch from Rorig, left inside, ball one. Rorig working quick on the mound. Leaves that one outside now. Trying to work that east west. Makes it a 2 0 count. Rorig quick into his windup again. That one's going to clip the bicep or tricep. Not sure about the arm muscles. Don't correct me on anatomy. And the icep. It's one of the seps. Anyway, <laughs> it's going to be a first base no matter what for Matthew Sheldon after he was hit by that pitch. First base runner of the inning for Yankton. Frankie the Monster. Ricky Enfelt stepping up there. Popped out to the second baseman in his first at bat. Fought one finds the zone. First pitch is a strike from Rorig. No info would love to put a ride into one of them, find the gaps. Sheldon taking a lead off at first. That one finds the zone as well. 0 2 count now to the left fielder. Rorig starting to pepper the zone here. What? 
Infeld thought that one was inside, but it just bent back in and caught the edge of the plate for strike three. Looking, that sits down Frankie. That brings up Owen Wishon. Wishon grounded out to the shortstop in his first at bat. He's also playing shortstop defensively. Sheldon dancing off at first. Rorick doesn't even look at him, goes home for strike one. Rorick, it looks like he's settled in in this second inning of work for him. Second pitch of the at-bat. He's that one low and away. Good block behind the plate. He's a bounce in the other in the left-handed batter's box. Good play by Haig behind the dish. 1-1 one, one count now for Rorig. Gets a sign he likes, comes set, fires home quickly, leaves that one inside of the transition to the hand. It's going to fall out of the catcher's mitt, and that's going to be a stolen base for Matthew Sheldon. Runner now in scoring position, 2-1 count, two outs. Yankton still searching for their first run of the game. If Sean's able to get on in any way, it would bring up Easton Nelson, who's on deck. That one low and away gets away from everybody, and that's going to be an easy trip to third base for Matthew Sheldon. Makes it a 3 1 count as, as well. I just realized how much I'm going to miss Cooper Groton Ice. And you know why. I've been missing it uh, basically every every sport. I miss the chatter done. getting picked up by the microphones <laughs> over in the dugout. Well, Sean sends this one out to right center field. Drifting back is the second baseman. Jumping effort falling to the grass. He's going to bring it in, though. Tough play made. It's going to save a run and end the inning for Yankton. One runner left on base with no hits, no errors either. As we are going to go to the top of inning number five. Take a look at our scoreboard update. 2-0, Yankton trailing Vermillion as we head to the fifth. The scoreboard update brought to you by Alani New Energy Drinks. Well, it should feel good and taste good, which is why Alani New Energy Drinks should be a part of your daily routine. Increase physical performance and boost focus with just 10 calories, no sugar or gluten. Alani New Energy Drinks are a healthy way to fuel your fun. New pitcher out on the mound. We're also going to get a defensive switch as well as it is Frankie Intville at the, on the rubber. We'll have that for you and all the switches when we come back on KYNT and KYNTV back in 60 seconds seconds with Yankton Bucks Baseball. With farmers and ranchers, it's ingrained. Your dedication and preparation. It's why at FNBO, we're proud to be your partner and one of the largest agribusiness lenders in the U.S., cultivating relationships with those who cultivate the land. Not from afar, but with you where you are. Boots on the ground. A bank just as rooted in the details as you. Helping farms, both big and small, do more and plan for the future. Learn more at fnbo.com, member FDIC. Wherever you are in life, you've got plans. You need health insurance for today and for the future. You need Avera Health Plans. Coverage that connects you to community resources, fitness center incentives, and health coaching. You need a health plan that provides solutions for your business and for your family. Learn more at averahealthplans.com. Avera Health Plans. Moving health forward. Welcome back in here. KYNT, KYNTV for more Yankton Bucks baseball. We talked about it a little bit before the break. Frankie Infeld out on the mound. He comes in from left field. Going out to left in his place is Kale Gary. So we've got some switches in the infield as well. I see Mark Cottle in the middle infield. He started this game on the mound. Looks like he's going to be moving to second base. Another change out there as well. Number 25 at shortstop, Tate Bestie. So those two step in for Owen Wishon and Matthew Sheldon. Easton Nelson still at third. Austin Goble still in center. Sager still at first. He was still behind the plate. First pitch from Intveld is grounded to the shortstop. Bestie's going to get some action early. Throws over to first. One pitch, one ground out for Frankie Intveld. Brings up Tate Haig after the 6-3 put up. First 
First pitch to him was a strike from Intvel. Higgs reached on a walk and struck out so far in this one. No one pitch from Intvel. Left that one inside, ball one. Are the any numbers on the scoreboard not working out there? On air production meeting. <laughs> on air production meeting? Uh, no, the scoreboard, it looks like the inning numbers and the runs per inning is also off on the outfield scoreboard. Hmm. Owens in there for a strike, though, for Intveld. Number he cares about right now is another strike. It's a one two count. Braden, go fix that. <laughs> Even if I knew how. Uh, I would if I knew how. I don't know how. <laughs> one two pitch from Intveld looking for a strikeout, and he gets it swinging. Haig has sat down for a strikeout for the second time today. Brings up Trey Hansen. Good start to life here for Intveld. Got a ground out in the first pitch he threw of the inning. Now a strikeout there. Enfield gets a call he likes, goes into his windup. Slow windup. This one driven out to left center field, giving chases. Austin Goldberg is going to let it bounce in front of him. Don't want to let it pass you. Keeps the runner at first, but that will be a single here, a two-out single for Trey Hansen. His first hit of the game. Brings up Carter Hansen, who has singled and struck out so far on this one. First pitch in there for a strike. Makes the count 0-1. And Phil likes to pepper the zone early. He has a very unique delivery. Kind of his arm kind of comes through late. You notice, Braden? It's it's. I don't want to call it slow. It's deliberate as yeah. well, getting around to it. Working on the stretch here. This one chopped to the first baseman, Sager. He's going to pick it up. Underhand scoop to Entveld, who's covering first. It's going to be a 3-1 put out to end the top half of the inning. Four up, three down, one hit, one runner left on base. No runs come across here in the top of inning number five. Go to the bottom of the fifth, but first, thank a couple of our Sportscaster Club members, starting with Pizza Ranch. For legendary chicken and the best pizza, it's Yankton Pizza Ranch on Broadway. Or over the phone at 665-1222. First Chiropractic Center, making life better one adjustment at a time. Aztec of Yankton. They are founded on innovation and a passion to help their customers. Right now, they offer a healthy sign-on bonus with great wages and benefits. Build your career with the group that's built to connect from rock to road. Click careers at aztecindustries.com. Aztec is the proud team sponsor for Yankton High School Baseball. And lastly, Stockman's Moto Sports, your local Polaris dealer with a full lineup of Rangers and sportsmen ready to get you in the fields, in the woods, or wherever you like to go. Stockman's Moto Sports, proud supporter of all area athletes. Looks like we have a new pitcher on the mound for Vermillion. We'll take care of those changes during this break. Back in 30 seconds as Yankton trails 2-0, heading to the bottom of inning number five. Truxedo is proud to have been part of the Yankton community since its start in 2000. One of the things I love most is that they believe in promoting from within. I've been given many opportunities to advance. Truxedo has an extensive variety of benefits available to their employees. The work environment at Truxedo is extremely positive. We are looking for you to join our production team. Visit www.truxedo.com careers to apply. Back in here, KYNT and KYNTV. Connor Peterson on the mound, getting his first action of the day. Nolan Nigren is at short, number eight. Now check in for him. First appearance for Nigren today. And in for Priester in right field is a player. I'll get to you in a second. I guarantee Aiden Christopherson. I was gonna say, it's, I guarantee it's someone on the team. <laughs> Just a wild card off the street. <laughs> They've picked him up. <laughs> a late a late addition free agent. <laughs> Where'd you come from? California penal. <laughs> First pitch reference. here. Hits the outside part of the plate for strike one. If you don't know the reference, I suggest you watch a little movie called Major League. That's also our intro song. It's obviously a fan favorite. As this one is ripped down the third baseline, it's going to be a base hit for Easton Nelson. That's how you lead off the bottom half of inning number five. Nelson, base runner at first, brings up Evan Sirk. Peter 
Anderson comes set on the mound, fires home, leaves that one high for ball one to Sirk. Second plate appearance of the day for Evan Sirk. The first since the second inning, grounded out to the shortstop. That one's in there for strike one, makes it a 1-1 one, one count. Peterson comes set. Runner takes off, and it's going to be a bunt laid down by Cirque as well, trying to beat it to first. Nelson's safe at second, but Cirque not there in time. Does move the runner over a station. 1-3 put out, puts Easton Nelson on second. Trey Sager now up to the plate. Reached first on a hit by pitch, then was thrown out on a fielder's choice. And his lone at bat so far. Should say his lone plate appearance. He's 0 for 0 in the official scorebook. That one's inside. Ball one. Sager, a new face of this varsity's roster. Was that one's in there for a strike? They're not recording any stats from the high school season last year for Yankton. 1-1 one, one count now after that strike from Peterson. Comes set. Now fires home. Got a piece of it. Doesn't put it in the field of play. So it'll be a foul ball. 1-2 count. 1-2. Sager stepping in again in a 1-2 count. Peterson looking for the call. Gets it. Checks the runner at second. This one too far underneath of it, it looks from Sagers. It's popped straight up the elevator shaft and brought in by Peterson. Caden Hughes. Does bring up Caden Hughes, the catcher here. Nine hole hitter for Yankton. Reached on a fielder's choice in his first at bat that came back in the third inning. Let's get a run across here. Because that's exactly what Yankton wants. So that one misses low and away, ball one. If Hughes is able to get on base and bring up, bring up the top of the order, Austin Goble, who led off with a double, he's on deck. And in the hole is last year's RBI leader, Lucas Kamshoff. So if Hughes can get on, it's the part of the order you want. That one's a strike in there. It's the outside part of the plate, 1-1 one, one count. Peterson toes the rubber again. Checks Nelson at second, now comes home with it. That one bounces away, gets away from the catcher. Easton Nelson's gonna come into third. Take a big turn, look a little bit. Now he's gonna slowly backpedal back to the bag. Eventually he'll step on it, I think. And there he goes. <laughs> Taking his time getting back there, but with no throw over. He, you know, maybe you could force a mistake as well if they think you're lollygagging. 2-1 count now with a runner on third. Two down in the inning for Caden Hughes. He dribbles this one out to the second baseman. Picked up, throw over to first in time, and that retires the side. That'll do it for the fifth inning of play here from Riverside Field. 2-0 your score, Yankton trailing Vermillion. So we head to the sixth. That scoreboard update brought to you by Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Colby Cookta. To win in sports, you have to adapt your strategy as the game changes. The same is true of investments. Contact Colby Cook to your Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Edward Jones, member SIPC. We'll be back with the top of inning number six when we return in 60 seconds here on KYNT, KYN-TV. Whether it's to watch the game, eat out with the family, or hang out with friends, Checkers Sports Bar and Grill is everyone's favorite place to eat. Checkers menu has mouth-watering burgers, satisfying sandwiches, and wraps, and of course, wings. With 18 specialty wings flavors, there's a sauce for everyone. Like to mix it up? Try their sauce of the month. Head to Checkers Tuesday to Thursday, 4 to 11, Friday to Sunday, 11 to 11, on Wallet just north of 4th Street in Yankton. The family is getting in the vehicle, going to the Yankton game. Everyone is decked out in Yankton red, but wait, little Josh has on green. Oh no, are we playing pier? They'd better stop at JJ Benji's to write that wrong. JJ Benji's is stocked with Yankton and Mount Marty fan gear in a variety of sizes and styles. For Bucks, Gazelles, and Lancer fan gear, you can count on JJ Benji's 201 Pine Street, Yankton. They make you look good. <laughs>
All right, welcome back to Riverside Field as Braden and I try to figure out who is catching for Yankton. <laughs> it looks like number 18, but unless Matthew Sheldon grew out the hair and I missed it and also turned blonde, I don't think that's him. So my next best guess is potentially number 13, which the only name who hasn't been accounted for out on the field so far is Gavin Johnson, but Gavin Johnson's listed as 17. So you can see the questions we have to answer here. But even Game Changer doesn't know. Game Changer says there's a catcher out there. <laughs> but new pitcher on the mound is Owen with Sean as we turn it back over to Bryce Ladwig to bring us down the home stretch. All right, with Sean on the mound, and that is right now a 1 1 count at the plate for Vermillion. Connor Roaring struck out looking and lined out to Easton Nelson over at third base his last two trips. It is Gavin Johnson behind the plate, as we just confirmed that. And Chopper over toward second. Cottle up with it. Sends it over to Feaser over at first. And that is a 4-3 put out. Unless I was zoned out, Brandon, did we go over the changes in the outfield? We, or just in the field, we go over those? We'll go over the – we'll start in the outfield. Is out in left field is Kale Gary. That is the same as last inning, but Bestie moves out to center. Out in right goes Frankie Entveld. Around the horde in the infield, Sam Goki at a third base. Beck Riken at short. Mark Cottle remains at second. And Easton Fieser, as you mentioned on that put out, is back in at first. Battery as of right now. Owen with Sean on the mound. Gavin Johnson behind the plate. And the 0-1 to Moskowitz misses low. It's a 1-1 count. You look at my scorebook, look at all these crossed off names. <laughs> this is a nightmare scenario. <laughs> the scoreboard wasn't built for seven pitchers. And pop up going over toward the right field line. Three players converge and bringing it in out in right is Caden Hughes for the second out. So, excuse Caden's me there. I, I said it was Frankie out in right. So, my apologies there. It is Caden Hughes as he turns around. That's 10, not 12. You got your back. Hey, it, it also helps that the teams are basically wearing the same jerseys. They really are. <laughs> Same exact color scheme out here. <laughs> uh, it's black jerseys and white numbers for Yankton, black jerseys and red numbers for Vermillion. Preister at the uh, plate for... Oh, no. Shane Christofferson. What is happening right now, Braden? Well, well, game changer saying Christofferson, but that is not Hayden Christofferson at the plate. There has been a change, change I believe, and that is number eight, Nolan Nigren at the plate. Oh, yeah, we did have that change. That's right. As <laughs> 2-0 misses, 3-0. I'm really hoping the rest of the season is a little bit more fluid. Um, you you got to get back into the swing of it. Just like these guys are trying to catch up to fastballs, find their footwork. And play their, everyone. Yeah, and, you know, everybody's got to get some minutes. As uh, Nigren draws a walk there from LaShawn. So Nolan Nigren takes his bag. Now Hayden Christofferson now will take his at bat. Took a walk and grounded out to the pitcher so far in this game. This was Sean checks over at first. And the runner getting yanked and a little spooked there, but it's a strike called 0-1. Nice throw from Wishon. And a nice cut there from Christofferson. Get, just gets over top of it. Nice uh, pitch from uh, Wishon. 0-2 count. Checking over at the runner from the stretch. Yep. And runner goes. And Johnson blocks the uh, pitch, but it will be a stolen base credited to Nolan Nigren. Yeah, a little low there on the pitch home from Wishon. Johnson was able to block it, potentially saving the runner from going to third, but wasn't able to get up and make a throw down the line. It's now the 1-2 uh, count to Christofferson. Cottle dancing around second base, wait for a throw. Ball gets away from Johnson, and now overthrows third base, but the cutoff is there out in left field. Nice job by Cale Gary getting to where he needs to get to. 
as that would have been a run scored if Gary was five feet behind that play. You know, very heads-up play by Kale Gary. That's why they teach you, even in the lowest leagues of baseball, one of the first things they teach you is to back up throws. Uh, Gary was out there. Beck Reichen was also making a move from shortstop to try to back that one up, but good play by Gary. And the 2-2 misses just a little bit low and brings the count full. Runner in square position, 90 feet away. Sean got a couple quick outs in the inning, but that walk and now the runner at third. Causing a little bit of trouble here. And the payoff hitch is a cut through, and Johnson has to pick up the drop ball, throws over to first. That is a strikeout, and that ends the top of inning number six. No hits, one runner left on, and it's still two to nothing. Vermillion on top. Yankton bats coming up. <laughs> And we'll thank a few of our sportscaster partners, including the Fox Stop. For all your daily convenience and fuel needs, make a stop at the Fox Stop and Buell's Cleaners. For rugs, uniforms, linens, and other cleaning services, go to Buell's in downtown Yankton. Vision Care Associates, where the health of your eyes comes first. And MTNRC Smith Insurance, an independent insurance agency offering you a variety of products for your individual, family, and business needs. All right, back in 30 seconds, Yankton Bucks Baseball on KYNT and KYNTV. My name is Jacob Foken. Running Songbird Kombucha allows me to show my imaginative spirit. Mount Marty was huge in giving me something to work towards and something to become. I didn't set out to become a kombucha brewer. Sort of everything fell into place. The brewing part is how I can be in touch with my artistry and my imagination. Show your spirit at Mount Marty University and schedule a tour today at showyourspiritmmu.com. And welcome back to Riverside Field. Bryce Laddick alongside Braden Butler. Vermillion leading Yankton 2 to nothing as we enter bottom of inning number 6. Yankton at bats coming up. And coming up for Yankton is Beck Riken. In the spot of Austin Goebel. And it takes a strike in the first pitch. Takes another 0 2. And the 0 2 goes down, goes down swinging. So a strikeout for Peterson on the mound. And that brings up Lucas Kamshoff. Has two flyouts to right field in this game. I don't think he'll mind flying it out to right as he wants to get over the over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe put a pole into this one, get over the left field fence as well. I remember I do remember last season one of his home runs went over right center, so he does have the power to drive drive it to the deepest parts of the ballpark. Was that his walk off home run? Yes. That's in our intro. <laughs> yeah, that's well reminded me of it. And the one oh and you can't make this stuff up. It actually is a fly out back out to right field again. So all three at-bats for Lucas Kamshoff have ended the same. And that will bring up Mark Cottle in place of Matthew Sheldon. Cottle last season as a batter had 42 plate appearances, hit for a 200 average. Six hits, one of them for extra bases, had one RBI, five runs scored. He also drew a 12 walks, which was tied for third most on the team. So he's a very disciplined player at the plate. And so takes a ball, 1-0. Ball misses low and outside, 2-0 count to Cottle. We keep making, no one cares about our scorebooks, except for you and me. But <laughs> seriously, this is like, Try this is like a baptism by fire up here right now. This is a it's a great trial run for this I new I must appreciate it. <laughs> and a 3 0 count to Cottle, showing the patience already for Cottle. And strike taken, it's taken all the way. Twins lost today, by the way, Braden. So I should be there hopefully on Saturday. So I'm gonna give them peace of my mind. <laughs> 3 1 chopper. 
Coach Drew Lawrence hasn't even moved. Just stone cold over there in the third base bat batting box. I was wondering why I haven't got the notification. The Cubs have disappointed me today. They're off today. They play the Dodgers tomorrow, so sadness is on the way. Can't lose them. Cottle takes a walk. The pitch misses low and away. And that brings up number eight, Kale Gary, in place of Frankie Infeld. I'm going to get any more lead for my pencil. <laughs> this is the one way the pen is superior right now. And the 1-0. -oh. Here takes a, a ball 1-0, -oh, rather. Kyle leading off first. Pitch misses outside. 2-0 -oh count. Vermilion leads Yankton 2-0. We're in the bottom of any number 6. 2 away. Yankton at bat. Yankton has four outs to work with. Try to get at least two runs across home plate. Pitch misses outside, brings the count 3 0. Easiest way to get runs is put as many people on bases as possible and look at down the barrel of another walk here for Peterson. Strike taken, presumably all the way by Gary. This is very similar to the last at bat for Cottle, where went up 3 0, then there was a strike pitch to make it 3 1. It's the exact same, this is a walk. -up. And 3-1 just hits that outside edge, brings the count full. Right, now it completely flips the mindset of Kale Gary in the batter's box. You go from up and having the world at your feet to having to protect. Pitch misses away, and that's back-to-back -back walks drawn by Yankton. And that will bring up number 25, Tate Bestie, in place of Owen Washan in the order. And we will have a mound visit from Vermillion. So we're going to go ahead and take a 60-second break. Come back. This is Yankton Bucks Baseball, KYNT and KYN TV. Did you know Sherco offers more than egg tarts? As an industry leader in construction, waste, and flatbed tarping systems, Sherco offers manual and electric tarp systems for not only grain trailers and grain carts, but also side dumps and dumps, belly dumps, roll-offs, flatbeds, and more. To learn more, give us a call at 1-800-474-8756 or find us at Sherco.com. Demand the best, demand Sherco. So I switched my insurance to State Farm and get this. I talked to an actual State Farm agent who lives in my actual town and get this. My actual agent in my actual town gave me actual help with the coverage I needed. And get this. My actual agent in my actual town who gave me actual help actually knows my name. And get this. They actually say it's called service. Call State Farm agent Rhonda Westland at 665-4411. All right, welcome back to here to Riverside Field. Tate Bestie, right as we rejoin the action, pops out to a short, and that will actually end the bottom half of the inning. Yankton did threaten. They left two runners on and no hits. And score is still 2 nothing for Million on top as we enter the top of inning number seven. And so that's your scoreboard update brought to you by Alani New Energy Drinks. Well, this should feel good and taste good, which is why Alani New Energy Drinks should be a part of your daily routine. Increase physical performance and boost focus with just 10 calories. No sugar or gluten. Alani New Energy Drinks are a healthy way to fuel your fun. Back in 60 seconds, Yankton Bucks Baseball, KYNT and KYN TV. If you experience pain or discomfort in your feet, ankles, knees, or back, an adjustment in how you walk or stand could be your drug-free pain solution. I'm Dr. Mackenzie Erlinson with First Chiropractic Centers. Chiropractic care, combined with the use of a high-quality shoe insert, is an easy and effective way to reduce back and foot pain. See if this solution is for you. First Chiropractic Centers, making life better, one adjustment at a time. With offices in Yankton, Hardington, Tyndall, and Wagner. It's a warm-up sale, now at Larry's Heating and Cooling. This is Miles. During our sale, get a Lennox 2-ton high-efficiency furnace and air conditioner installed for only $6,000. This is just a straightforward, low price on a Lennox furnace and AC. No gimmicks. 
$6,000 for a new Lennox Furnace and AC installed. We're Yankton's only locally owned Lennox dealer. Larry's Heating and Cooling, Yankton and Vermillion. All right, welcome back here to Riverside Field. New pitcher on the mound again here for Yankton. And that is uh, Sager for Yank Trey Sager. And I don't think he had recorded any varsity stats last year, correct? Right now, no, remember he did, that? No, he did not have any varsity stats last year for Yankton. Left handed hurler. See uh, how he can do in his first appearance here. You know, we talked about it all day long, his first game of the season. Coach Lawrence wants to see what his uh, what his arms got, who he has to trust in his rotation, especially when you're trying to uh, replace some guys at the top of the rotation. And a lefty on the mound, so that's new for Yankton. Yeah, he gives a new look to Vermillion. They've seen a new look basically every inning. <laughs> so L Literally every inning, yeah. This is the newest of the new looks. So Connor Peterson, lead off hitter for Vermillion, has a strikeout, a fielder's choice, and popped out to right field so far in this game. First pitch from Sager is going to miss inside, 1-0. And Sager now gets set. He delivers from the stretch. Doesn't really have a wind up. Misses low, 2 0. Kind of a slower pace getting to, um, set, but here is the 2 0 breaking ball, and therefore a strike. The 2 1 count from left arm of Sager. The opposite of what we saw earlier on from Vermillion with Connor Rorig on the mound. It was a very fast pace in his pitching. Sager taking his time. And the 2 1 misses outside, makes it count 3 1. Pretty good velocity out of that arm, though. And Sager only working out of the stretch as well. Sometimes with these guys, it's just a comfort thing. Johnson feeds it to the outside of the plate behind it and it does a nice job framing there. Brings that ball back into the zones, a full count. And the payoff pitch misses high. It's a walk issued. As Connor Peterson reaches the bag. On base for the second time today. This one on a walk, reached on a fielder's choice earlier on, and he was the first of two runs in that third inning of play, which uh, now is the deficit here at Riverside Field, 2-0 for million leading. And now Robe at the plate as Johnson uh, blocks, and the runner takes off. It's a nice throw from his knees down to second base, but not in time. As runner advances into scoring position, that's Peterson. So now it is Stagger stepping off the mound, communicating with Coach Drew Lawrence over in the Yankton dugout. And the shortstop coming in. And turn around and over through the bag, but backing up out in center is Beck Riken. And again, there we go with the uh, backing up importance for the Bucks. Sorry about that uh, noise, by the way. It was harder on my ears than it was yours, I promise you. Sager again communicating with Coach Drew Lawrence. And the pitch. Nice block by Johnson behind the plate. So now Sager checking in the 1-1. One, one. Oh, 
and swinging over the top of it is Robe. Brings it out to one and two. Now Robe at the plate right now has been on base twice so far, reached on an error in the first inning, then was hit by a pitch in the third. He is the second of those two runs on the board for the Tanagers. The one two. Misses outside, 2-2 two, two count. And the 2-2 two, two from Sager. Is a punch out looking. Sager gets him looking on the outside. Nice breaking ball. So Robe goes down. And that brings up Tate Haig, who himself has two strikeouts at the plate here today. Two strikeouts and a walk so far. So 0 for 2 on the official scorebook. So one away here. Top of inning number 7. Vermillion leads Yankton 2-0. Has a runner in scoring position. Breaking ball hits the outside. 0-1 count to Haig. Sager again from the stretch. Delivers low. It's a 1 1 count. And now Sager checking home. Delivers a strike down the middle. It's a 1 2 count. See Johnson behind the plate. He gets out of a more traditional catcher stance and almost goes to a half squat here just in case that runner takes off for third. Does leave it a little more susceptible for a low block. And it looks like he's going to stay more traditional this time. And the one-two from Sager. Chopper over toward a third foul. Count remains one and two. Sager taking his time. Runner still kind of dancing at second. Breaking ball hits the outside. Another strikeout for uh, Sager. Maybe a bit outside, but uh, just painted the co corner apparently. And so that's back to back strikeouts and back to back strikeouts looking as that brings up uh, Trey Hansen, who has grounded up to short, has a fielder's choice RBI and another single on top of that. Has a good day at the plate. He's got one of three hits right now for the Tangers and also that RBI which is the difference maker right now in this 2-0 ball game. And sends the first pitch foul, 0-1. And pitch misses high and uh, gets by Johnson, goes to the backstop, runner advances to third, just 90 feet away now. Count at one and one. So the one one, Sager. Delivers, and break the ball. Lifts high. It's a 2-1 count. Or hangs high, rather. So you can't be thinking too much about that runner on third right now. Two down in the inning. All you got to do is focus on getting this guy out at the plate. 2-1 is sliced foul. Almost takes off someone's head over in the stands. Careful over there. And I'm, I'm serious, Brayden. It was like a foot away from someone's face. They're okay, so I can say it like that. <laughs> So I personally, if I'm here at Riverside taking in a ball game, I'm sitting behind home plate. Right behind the net. <laughs> Very comfortable behind the net. The 2-2. Two -two. Sager. Trying to get yanked it out of a jam here. Another one lifted foul. Most important part about being behind the plate, closer to the concession stands. Yes. <laughs> now you get me hungry. Just think. You said concession stands. I think hot dog. I get hungry. Oh. 
Is the seventh inning here? <laughs> the 2-2. Two -two. Misses outside, brings the count full. Just because it is the seventh inning doesn't mean this is any close to over. Yankton still has a chance with the bats. Trying to get out of this one, keep it a two-run ball game. Three two grounder over towards second base and off of the glove of Cottle and then pass a right fielder in Caden Hughes. So I was would just presume an error would be assessed as a run comes in. Either way, a run. So it depends if it is an RBI or not. Makes it a 3-0 ball game as well. Makes it even harder in the uh, in the bottom of the seventh for Yankton to come back in this. And they are giving credit as a single, so that's an RBI single by Trey Hansen. Brings up Carter Hansen. Vermillion on top three, nothing as you mentioned. Pitch misses inside, 2-0. Sager's got to settle in here. It's big for him to get out of this inning. Runner still in scoring position. Last thing you want is to look at a 4 nothing de deficit going to the bottom of the seventh. And the 2-0 misses low. Three zero pitch from Sager. This is high and outside. It'll be a walk issued to Carter Hansen. Now two runners on base for Vermillion. And that brings up Connor Rorig. Strikeout looking, a line out to third and a ground out to second so far in the game. I'm sure he wants to add an RBI into that stat line. From the stretch, Sager. Misses high and outside, 1-0. The 1-0 from Sager. Hits a strike set on the inside, it's a 1-1 one -one count. Two runners on for Vermillion. Sager checks the leadoff runner and delivers a strike on the outside. It's a one-two. Back-to-back strikes here for Sager. Trying to get out of this inning. Would love a punch out right here. The one-two. Sager to Rorig. And this is Ty Johnson went to uh, throw, but had to kind of reach for that baseball. So transition, glove to hand. It's going to take a little extra long anyway. So runner advances. Runners at the corners now for the Tanagers. Honestly, smart show restraint there by Johnson. If that one goes over the head of the third baseman because you mishandled the throw, could be another run on the board. And a hit out toward right field that will score one runner will advance past second into uh, third base on the bobble from Caden Hughes then runner on the throw advances to second and we turn to our scorebooks right now <laughs> I believe they'll rule it as an RBI single and yep. then advancing on the throw but it's another big play there for Vermillion here down the stretch now two runs in the top of this seventh inning really trying to put this one away I'll bring up Jack Moskowitz Strikeout, hit by pitch, and a pop out to right field in this game. It's four nothing. Vermillion leads. Swinging through the first pitch, strike 0-1. Strike on the outside, 0-2. Oh, Moskowitz 
Moskowitz would love to get his first hit of the game here. Could potentially drive in two if he finds the right part of the park. 0-2 oh, hits the outside. Cora strikeout for Sager to end the Vermilion threat. It's a strikeout looking for Moskowitz. And we enter the bottom of inning number seven. Vermilion leads Yankton four to nothing here at Riverside Field. Back in 60 seconds. This is Yankton Bucks Baseball, KYNT and KYN TV. Are you ready for a hydration revolution? Introducing Ghost Hydration, the ultimate drink to keep you feeling refreshed and revitalized. It's packed with a unique blend of electrolytes and vitamins, giving you the perfect balance to conquer your day. And its variety of mouth-watering flavors will make your taste buds dance with joy. Hitting the gym, going on an adventure, or just need to pick me up? Ghost Hydration has your back. Experience the hydration revolution for yourself. Stay refreshed, stay revitalized, stay ghostly hydrated with Ghost Hydration. KYNT. Yankton. FM 1021. And AM 1450. I'm Colby Cookta, one of your Yankton Edward Jones financial advisors. We're all about financial investments, but we also value the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. That's why I'm a proud sponsor of the Yankton Bucks and Gazelles on KYNT. Call 605-665-4567 or visit edwardjones.com for all your investment needs. I'm Colby Cookta, financial advisor, Edward Jones Yankton, member SIPC. Welcome back to Riverside Field. Yankton needs to get something going here. Down four runs in the bottom of inning number seven. And a 0-1 to Gavin Johnson. Johnson Chopper over to Drew Lawrence. We'll pick it up. 0 2 count. Well, it's Sam Goki, rather. And swings through and hits the dirt and the throw over to first. They're going to say in time. And so they get the runner. That's one away. Bottom being number seven. I would say there were a lot of people wearing black jerseys that were upset about that one, but I should clarify, a lot of Yankton people wearing black jerseys that were upset about that one. So Sam Goki was uh, hitting in place of Easton Nelson. And now at the plate, number 13, uh, Gavin Johnson and Johnson hits it out toward left <laughs> and neither of us know what happened we're both looking at the scorebook I think we may have an error out there in left <laughs> on air production meeting this is why all these substitutions are a nightmare right now but Yankton does have a runner in scoring position and it was an error out in left field so we now know that And that was Gavin Johnson batting in place of Evan Sirk. And strike two now to Easton Feaser. Batting in place of Trey Sager. I'm running out of real estate on the scorebook right now. Easton Feaser has an 0-2 count. One away. Runner in score position for the Bucks. In the bottom of inning number seven. And Feaser rips this one over toward first. Gets through the first base, but no one's there to cover the bag. And we'll see what they score this. Could make an argument for a hit, but they're going to give it an error. So Easton Feaser reaches on an air. Yeah, Feaser ripped that one, and I, I don't know if the air is necessarily the mishandle or the fact that nobody went and covered the bag, and that is the error in, in question. Caden Hughes at the plate takes a strike on the outside, 0-1. Pop 
pop out to first base. Working his way under it is Moskowitz and gloves it for the out. And now it is Beck Riken at the plate. Top of the order here. You're hoping Riken can get on base any means necessary with two down in the inning and Lucas Kamshoff waiting in the hole. Riken takes a ball on the outside. It is Lucas Kamshoff and Gavin. Nope, never mind. So the only one that hasn't had their. Oh, Caden Hughes. So Lucas Kamshoff and Caden Hughes, Brayden, are the only batters in their original position in this batting order today. <laughs> Second pitch in there for a strike. It's a 1-1. One, one. Bases loaded for, excuse me, runners at the corners for the Bucks. This is why having all the black jerseys on the field is confusing. <laughs> <laughs> black jerseys and white pants. At least the hats are different. And strike on the outside, 1-2. But, yeah, runners at the corners for the Bucks. Trailing 4 nothing, two away. Potentially the most important pitch of the game right here. Riken's got to protect. Breaking ball in the dirt, 2-2. It's a tough take from Riken, especially being down 1-2. The last thing you want to want to happen is get sat down looking on a close call. Yeah. 2-2, foul in the dirt, count remains. So the 2-2 two -two is hit out toward center field. Working his way under it is Robe for the third out, and that will do it. As the Vermilion Tangers take this season opening game 4 to nothing over the Yankton Bucks. We have a Yankton Rexall postgame show around the corner. Don't go anywhere. This is Yankton Bucks baseball on KYNT and KYNTV. Are fine lines and wrinkles making you feel less confident? Imagine a smoother, more radiant you in just one visit. The solution? Botox. Dr. Elwood at Elwood Family Dental Care is trained and experienced in providing cosmetic Botox to reduce fine lines in the facial region. Say goodbye to frown lines, crow's feet, and forehead wrinkles and rediscover your natural beauty with safe and effective Botox treatment. Contact Elwood Family Dental Care today to schedule a consultation and see if you're a good candidate. University of South Dakota football and volleyball season tickets are available now. The Coyote football team reached new heights in 2023, totaling 10 wins and hosting two home playoff games. South Dakota volleyball continued their tradition of success last season, clinching a share of the regular season Summit League title. Join the party this upcoming season and secure your seats today. For ticket information, visit Goyotes.com. Hey Yankton, graduation is approaching. Have you thought about what you want to do with your future? Maybe some PLC, automation, engineering, maintenance manufacturing. Let Hedro help you build your future as we are proud partners of Build Dakota. Check with your schools today to find out how to be a part of our future or contact Evie at 605-668-2344. That's 605-668-2344. Hedro, a story shaped by you. Medicare coverage is not a one-size-fits-all coverage. Do you like to travel? Are you wanting to spend your winters down south? Or just spend some time with your grandkids? Make sure you choose a plan that fits your needs and will travel with you. Visit Julie at Missouri River Associates to review your upcoming Medicare or your current needs. That's Julie at Missouri River Associates, 665-6885. Traveling to Yankton for business or pleasure? Then book your stay at Yankton's two best hotels, the Fairfield Inn and Suites and Holiday Inn Express. Both are conveniently located to everything in Yankton. Both offer complimentary hot breakfast and meeting rooms for business travelers. And if you want a great rate and still be able to change your reservation without a hassle, call either hotel direct. The Fairfield and Holiday Inn Express, two great hotel choices when visiting or arranging rooms for guests to Yankton. Get it cleaned with Buell's. Dress shirts, suits, dresses, coats. 
At Buell's, they specialize in dry cleaning and pressing. You can pick it up or even have it delivered. Got a tough stain you're worried about getting out? Leave it to Buell's. They're experts in getting out those nasty stains. Do you wash your own comforter? If you really want it clean, let Buell's do it. Their large size washers are perfect for comforters. If you need it clean, take it to Buell's. 444 West 3rd, Yankton. Boston Shoes to Boots is proud to support Yankton High School Athletics. Boston Shoes to Boots is your headquarters for quality and comfortable shoes for the whole family. From athletics and work boots to sandals and dress, we have you covered by our popular brands like Brooks, New Balance, Birkenstock, Red Wing, Keen, and so many more. Shop our location downtown at 313 Cedar Street or visit us online at bostonshoestoboots.com. Boston Shoes to Boots, your footwear experts since 1915. You can help us promote Yankton. I'm Nancy Winandi from Yankton Thrive. Be a champion for Yankton. Share with people you meet how great Yankton is. Tell them about our wonderful recreational areas, incredible schools, fun events, and plentiful jobs. All of that, plus being a safe and friendly city, make Yankton a great place to live and thrive. Encourage them to visit the Yankton Thrive website, yanktonsd.com, for all the information they need to make Yankton home. Upper Midwest Garage Door and Clopay Garage Doors have teamed up and are offering you a rebate up to $600 with a qualifying purchase on your Clopay Residential Garage Door. The Clopay Rebate Program is going on now for a limited time. The Clopay Residential Garage Doors come in many different colors and styles. Stop in or call Upper Midwest Garage Door at 689-3667. Upper Midwest Garage Door at 212 Douglas in Yankton. Some restrictions apply. And welcome to the Yankton Rexall post game show. Yankton Bucks fall to Vermillion four to nothing here in the season opener, and being joined by Coach Drew Lawrence, our post game coach interview brought to you by Rhonda Westland State Farm Insurance. Let Rhonda review your current home, auto, or life insurance to see if she can help you save some money. Is Rhonda Westland State Farm coach opening game of the season? Um, even loss is just nice to get out on the field, right? And actually, pretty decent weather for the opening game. Yeah, the weather, you can't really get much better than tonight. I mean, it's not windy at all, which is weird in the spring. Um, sunny and really nice. So we'll take that weather all the time. I wish it was like this all the time. I don't think it's going to be like that on Saturday. There wasn't snow on the ground to begin the morning. <laughs> it's so just yeah, uh, we've overall. played while it has been snowing, so you're right. Yeah. You know, so uh, opening question for this, obviously I think I know why, but seven pitchers and seven innings for the Bucks. You kind of warned me before we went on air. I'm um, saying that you're probably going to throw a lot of arms out there. We just want to see what you what you're working with for the year. Yeah, I mean we got region games coming up. You know, Class A games that um, we we you know try and win, and we need to win. So that's coming up in two days. So we want to make sure we try to keep everyone under like 20 or 25 pitches. Um, but just with the opportunity to play Vermillion, a Class B team, you can do that in those games um, where you can throw out seven guys. So, you know, it took a lot of planning as far as making sure people were in the right spot and, and you know, we had to make sure the players knew exactly where we were going and how it was going to work. So luckily the, the players were good with it and everyone knew before the game what inning they were pitching, who was going to short when, all that good stuff. But, um, yeah, just an opportunity to make sure we get our arms loose. You know, we have a six-month season essentially when you add Legion to that. So we just want to be careful. We don't need anyone coming out here right away throwing a bunch of pitches uh you uh, don't have jason mccorkle behind the plate for the first time seemingly in like a decade it feels like but uh you do have some other guys behind there just uh um in for example i believe the like gavin johnson went back there and uh, to start the game it was uh caden hughes um kind of what did you see from them yeah um you know as far as when you're talking about jason mccorkle since I've been doing this, I think this is my seventh year being uh, the head coach here. I've only had two catchers. Yeah. <laughs> I've had Michael Drotsman and Jace McCorkle. So um, good for these new, these guys to kind of get a feel of me. And, and, they, you know, it's different. It's different than when you're playing a younger level because I'm talking with the catchers in between every inning to talk about, you know, what our plan is and all that. And uh, Caden and, and Gavin did a good job. Um, and I think they're going to do a good job throughout the season. All right, kind of a uh, preview of uh, Huron. I know that you don't know all the roster necessarily and stuff, but it was a reschedule from this last Monday, um, and hopefully it still is able to be played Saturday. A lot of wins in the forecast. Kind of what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's going to be windy. Um, you know, the gusts up to 50. As of now, we're planning on playing um, 
not that you like playing in 15 mile per hour <laughs> winds, but hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully it goes down. But as of now, we're planning on playing. Um, you know, we had to reschedule that with Huron, so we we actually got it on a track day. So I think we're going to have like four or five guys gone, but that's okay because these all these players that we have on this varsity roster are going to get plenty of playing time this year, and um, it's just an opportunity for for guys to be able to start. So. The breaking balls are going to be wicked. That's what you're saying. Well, it depends which way the wind's blowing. I think the wind's <laughs> going to be blowing out to right center. So it may the off-speed <laughs> stuff is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, so we'll just throw all the off-speed guys. No, that sounds good, Coach. Uh, you may have tell Tanner um, over the weekend mm-hmm. if I uh, am, in fact, gone. That's uh, that's to be determined. But uh, first game of the year, I'm glad it's uh, under our belts. And uh, thank you for joining us here in the postgame. Yep, appreciate it. Coach Drew Lawrence, Yankton Bucks Baseball. Take a break, come back, and continue here in the Yankton Rexall postgame show. Getting the kids to practice on time. Remembering if it's your day to bring snacks. Making it to the game with a clean jersey. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Auto owners works with independent agents who answer when you call. So you can worry about more important things, like whether your kid is going to run toward first or third base. That's simple human sense. Don't gamble. Insure with MTRC Smith Insurance in Yankton, your independent agent for home, business, auto, life, and bonds. MTRCSmithInsurance.com. As times change, technology changes. Don't be left behind by your contact lenses. Vision Care Associates now offers infused multifocal contact lenses, specialized lenses that can provide you with clear vision at multiple distances without switching between glasses and contacts. Don't let glasses slow you down any longer. Call us today to schedule an appointment to try infused multifocal contact lenses. Vision Care Associates, where the health of your eyes comes first. You feel awful. Stuffy nose, then runny nose. Sniffles too. You don't know what to take to make yourself feel better. At Yank to Rexall, when you feel under the weather, we want to help. But there are a lot of over-the-counter choices. Some may even interfere with the daily medications you're taking. The Yankton Rexall staff is there to help you make the best choice for your health. Yankton Rexall, your hometown pharmacy since 1923. Earn a dollar off per gallon of gas when you transfer and fill a prescription at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's a $1 fuel saver for each prescription you transfer and fill at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to transfer your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee pharmacy and let us handle the rest. Or you can transfer online or transfer using the Hy-Vee mobile app. Restrictions apply. Want to take the hassle out of servicing your heating or cooling system? Then sign up for the Kaiser Signature Membership Program. This is Chris Frick with Kaiser Heating and Cooling. Not only will you get peace of mind knowing your units are being serviced regularly, but being a Kaiser Signature member gives you priority service, a discount on parts and labor, and no overtime rates. Take comfort and let our qualified professional technicians keep you running. Be the wiser and go with Kaiser. Kaiser Heating and Cooling of Yankton. If you're like a lot of South Dakotans, you've made a purchase online for services or products and have had no issues. Unfortunately, scammers view the internet as their playground, and they're constantly deploying new scams to attempt to take your hard-earned funds. Fraudulent websites have grown by leaps. Consumers and businesses need to check all aspects of a website before making any type of purchase. Questions regarding this scam should be directed to South Dakota Attorney General's Consumer Protection at 800-300-1986. The other day, a guy came into the UPS store to pick up some blueprints we had printed for him. While we were finishing up the order, he asked about business cards as he was about out of his current supply. Hi, this is Doug at the UPS store in Yankton and Vermilion. We all have various printing needs and the UPS store is here to help. Stop into our locations in Yankton or Vermilion and ask about our current print specials. Oh, the gentleman from earlier? We had new business cards ready for him the very next business day. Life doesn't slow down just because you're sick. At Yankton Medical Clinic, you can be seen today. Yankton Medical Clinic provides complete care with their full range of specialists, diagnostic tools, outpatient surgery center, and pharmacy. So you get all the care you need, all under one roof. Get back to the busyness of everyday life, feeling like yourself again. With same-day appointments at Yankton Medical Clinic. So much care, so close to home. F&BO Free Checking. Is checking that's actually free. 
No fees or minimums, and now no overdraft fees. It's ever so personal, with people to help every step of the way. And easy, with the mobile app that allows you to deposit checks and manage your accounts wherever you are. So make the switch so you can do more with the great big small bank. Visit fnbo.com to learn more or stop on by. FNBO free checking. It's ever so free. Member FDIC. Hey, welcome to the Yankton Rexall postgame show. Bryce Ladwig here along with you. Riverside Field, Yankton, Bucks baseball falls to the Vermilion Tanagers 4 2 0. And they're 0 1 on the season, but it's a Class B matchup. Uh, regional play, Class A's start Saturday. And not that Yankton wasn't trying to win this game, but that's why they threw seven pitchers in seven innings. We just heard from Coach Drew Lawrence trying to see what they're working with this season, get some arms loose, and get ready for um, their own class play this coming weekend. I'm in the Fairfield Inn and Suites broadcast booth. Hot breakfast, large family rooms, and a great location can be found at Fairfield Inn and Suites in Yankton at 2607 Broadway Avenue. Or by calling 605-653-2250. Yankton falls to 0-1 on the season. Vermillion 1-0. That is going to act as your out-of-town scoreboard today. Brought to you by Upper Midwest Garage Door. Specializing in the sales, installation, and service of residential and commercial garage doors and openers throughout eastern South Dakota. Upper Midwest Garage Door is your local authorized co-pay dealer. And uh, we will have your stats of the game coming right after this break along with your players of the game and much more that's all coming up next here on the yankton rexall post game show yankton rexall your hometown pharmacy since 1923 vermilion over yankton four to nothing here at riverside field yankton bucks baseball kynt and kyn tv a radio commercial for hearing loss is tricky you see there are two scenarios either it's you or it could be the loved one you're with here's how to find out if the radio is deafeningly loud right now it's probably not you if it's not deafeningly loud, look over at your loved one wearing earplugs. Maybe it's time to visit the hearing experts. Avera Medical Group Audiology Yankton. Doctors Matt Rumsey and Kendra Bailey can get you back to never missing a beat during a conversation. They offer the latest technology and free two-week test drives. Call 605-655-1220. So I switched my insurance to State Farm and get this. I talked to an actual State Farm agent who lives in my actual town. And get this. My actual agent in my actual town gave me actual help with the coverage I needed. And get this. My actual agent in my actual town who gave me actual help actually knows my name. And get this. They actually say it's called service. Call State Farm agent Rhonda Westland at 665-4411. <laughs> Medicare coverage is not a one-size-fits-all coverage. Do you like to travel? Are you wanting to spend your winters down south? Or just spend some time with your grandkids? Make sure you choose a plan that fits your needs and will travel with you. Visit Julie at Missouri River Associates to review your upcoming Medicare or your current needs. That's Julie at Missouri River Associates, 665-6885. Getting the kids to practice on time. Remembering if it's your day to bring snacks. Making it to the game with a clean jersey. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Auto owners works with independent agents who answer when you call. So you can worry about more important things, like whether your kid is going to run toward first or third base. That's simple human sense. Don't gamble. Insure with MTRC Smith Insurance in Yankton, your independent agent for home, business, auto, life, and bonds. MTRCSmithInsurance.com. Are you concerned about macular degeneration and the impact it can have on your eyesight? Vision Care Associates is proud to offer new technology that can help diagnose and manage macular degeneration earlier and more effectively than before. With cutting edge equipment and the expertise of Dr. Fieser, Dr. DeYoung, and Dr. Slowey, we're dedicated to providing you with the best possible care. Call today and see the difference. Vision Care Associates, where the health of your eyes comes first. You feel awful. Stuffy nose, then runny nose. Sniffles too. You don't know what to take to make yourself feel better. At Yank to Rexall, when you feel under the weather, we want to help. But there are a lot of over-the-counter choices. Some may even interfere with the daily medications you're taking. 
The Yankton Rexall staff is there to help you make the best choice for your health. Yankton Rexall, your hometown pharmacy since 1923. Have you seen the new UTVs and ATVs on the lot at Lewis and Clark Ford? I'm Brandon Tykro, and I'm excited to announce that Lewis and Clark Ford is now selling Massimo Motorsports products. We have on hand Massimo UTVs and ATVs with very affordable prices and financing available. Massimo comes standard with winches and touchscreens with the ability to add many more accessories. Stop at Lewis and Clark Ford and check them out, and look for boats coming soon. Lewis and Clark Ford, 4th and Capital, Yankton. Earn a dollar off per gallon of gas when you transfer and fill a prescription at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's a $1 fuel saver for each prescription you transfer and fill at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to transfer your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. Or you can transfer online or transfer using the Hy-Vee mobile app. Restrictions apply. What's the best beverage to enjoy while rooting on your team? 1919 Root Beer, of course. 1919 is brewed in small batches with only the finest ingredients, real sugar and real vanilla. The unique recipe and these choice ingredients make 1919 the creamiest full-bodied draft root beer available. Find it in 12 packs and single-serve cans at grocery, convenience stores, and restaurants. 1919 is alcohol-free and contains no caffeine, making it a beverage of choice at any time for anyone in the family. Want to take the hassle out of servicing your heating or cooling system? Then sign up for the Kaiser Signature Membership Program. This is Chris Frick with Kaiser Heating and Cooling. Not only will you get peace of mind knowing your units are being serviced regularly, but being a Kaiser Signature member gives you priority service, a discount on parts and labor, and no overtime rates. Take comfort and let our qualified professional technicians keep you running. Be the wiser and go with Kaiser. Kaiser Heating and Cooling of Yankton. All right, welcome back to the Yankton Rexall post game show. Yankton Rexall, your hometown pharmacy since 1923. Let's get to your stat recap brought to you by Mayor Signs. If it's time to review the look of your business signage, let Mayor Signs help. They offer all, they offer all types of signs, including lit, non lit, digital, and much more. Contact Mayor Signs today on 4th and Broadway in Yankton. All right, we'll go ahead and start with uh, start with uh, Vermilion. And uh, Vermilion, it was kind of Peterson. It was 0 for 3 with a walk and two runs. And then Robe was 0 for 3 with a run. Haig was 0 for 3 with a walk. Hansen was 2 for 4 with two RBIs. Carter Hansen, 1 for 3, 1 walk. Connor Rohrig, 1 hit in 4 at-bats, had an RBI. Moskowitz, 0 for 3. Preister, 1 for 2. Aiden Christofferson, 0 for 1, had two walks drawn. And Nolan Nygren, 0 for 1. RBIs go the way of, I said, Hansen. And Rorig, each with an RBI. So three runs batted in on the uh, four total runs for Vermillion. Yanked in at the plate. Austin Goble was one for two. Beck Reichen, 0 for two. Lucas Kamshoff, 0 for three. Matthew Sheldon, 0 for one. Mark Cottle um, drew a walk. Frank Infeld, 0 for two. Kale Gary drew a walk. And Owen was Sean 0 for 2. Tate Bestie 0 for 1. Easton Nelson 1 for 2. Sam Goki 0 for 1. Evan Sirk 0 for 1. Gavin Johnson 1 for 1 had a double. And Sager 0 for 1. Uh, Easton Fieser 0 for 1. And Caden Hughes 0 for 3. So three hits total for the Bucks. 6 for Vermillion. Three errors for Yankton. 1 for Vermillion. Vermillion left eight men on base. Yankton left seven. The winning pitcher, Connor Roaring, with a now record of 1-0 on the season. And uh, Roarig, look at his stat line, two innings pitched and had a strikeout. Losing pitcher, uh, Beck Reichen for the Bucks, 
and he had one inning pitch, two runs, one earned, two walks, and a strikeout. That is your stat recap. Again, brought to you by Mayor Signs. Defensive player of the game brought to you by Olsen's Pest Technicians, your residential and commercial pest control solution. Call 1-800-KIL-BUGS uh, for that. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, a lot of defensive changes, but uh, I'm going to go with our starting first baseman, uh, Sager, um, out there. He started at first. Uh, Trey Sager, rather. Yeah, started at first. I remember he had a nice scoop over there. So we are defensive player of the game. It's brought to you by Olsen's Pest Technicians. Your residential and commercial pest control solution. Call 1-800-KIL-BUGS. Offensive player of the game. Brought to you by hy V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Uh, not a huge um, day offensively for the uh, Bucks. No RBI. So we're just going to give it to the first hit of the season. That's going to go away of Austin Goble, our offensive player of the game. Move of the game brought to you by Mason Strom and the Move Group. Buying or selling, move with Mason and the Move Group. I think that's going to be the first strikeout of the season for the Bucks. Mark Cottle got the first batter. Connor Peterson looking on a strike three call on the outside. All right, move of the game. All right, your schedule preview brought to you by Roy Wilcox State Farm Insurance. Roy Wilcox State Farm Insurance is helping customers get to a better state for over 100 years, no matter where you are in life. They will help you make the right play calls for your insurance coverage. That's Roy Wilcox State Farm. Yankton taking on Huron this Saturday at 1 p.m., a doubleheader, and either myself or Tell Tanner will be on the call. People wonder why I keep saying that. I'm supposed to be going to an awards banquet in Minneapolis this Saturday, but uh, what do you know? We got a kiddo at home that uh, might prevent that from happening. We'll see how it all uh, turns out. This is the Yankton Rexel post game show. And for Braden Butler, I am Bryce Lavig. Vermillion defeats Yankton four to nothing. And appreciate you joining us here on KYNT and KYNTV. This has been a presentation of Yankton High School Baseball on KYNT. The Yankton High School Baseball team would like to thank their team sponsor of Aztec. Aztec is offering a healthy sign-on bonus with great wages and benefits. Build your career with the group that's built to connect from rock to road. Click careers at AztecIndustries.com. This has been Yankton Baseball on KYNT. FM 1021 and AM 1450 KYNT.